Okay, hello everyone. Uh, it's so weird how this game is always so quiet. Let's go in, in there and see the settings. And this, I don't know why this is so much quieter than it is. Oh, well, that's because I was like, so. Turn that all the way up. Hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, here we are. Uh, we're doing, you know, after today's video released, I of course wanted to do guild wars one i really felt like um it's really i really felt like that's what i wanted to do i'm just like yeah okay like i'm pumped for uh for this right so uh that way it kind of oh you guys can't see it <laughs> oh you never do you see it right? i have it from today's video getting a slow attack on trigger what there we go sorry guys here we are. I didn't do anything. I just walked over to the merchant. Uh, sell everything. I can't sell them. I can't sell them. Uh, make sure that I have a. I hope the sound is okay for you guys. It sounds really strange in my ears. Are you not saying anything? Okay, I guess some don't say anything. Uh, Alright, anyways, so let's get into it. So, uh, yesterday we started our little journey. We explored a lot of the areas that we can't actually see in Guild Wars 2, which is super... Um, you know sad i mean that's sad to me because i'm like man i wish we could go there you know so uh but we're gonna see some more stuff today we're gonna we're gonna explore some more stuff um so and to kind of review uh we started as a student of the minister uh, a mon monastery ministry monastery and um we ended up going um and Um, so we ended up going to just we're, we were training, right? We're a ranger, we're a ranger person, and we were training to become, uh, you know, this this powerful ranger. So we went out into Sanko Vale and then Kenya Province, and we were training. We we're doing all these things. Um, we met with our headmasters, and we met with Master Togo, and we kind of learned a little bit about the world, about how um the you know one part of like one of the factions that occupies this island is the crimson skull and uh they are led by one of the students uh that used to be you know one of master togo's students that used to be at the monastery uh we learned about Ma uh farmer Z uh, zheng zhou uh we learned a little bit about the waterways and the naga invading uh, we did some side quests here and there. We kind of, we learned a little bit about the Yetis. This is the Tomat Pass right here. We kind of went over there. Uh, we saw the shrine. Um, and then eventually as we got our, like, our, our insignia, our ranger insignia, and we were, like, recognized as this powerful, um, master ranger or whatever, um, Master Togo wanted to take us to see the minister because he does this every year. He takes his uh, biggest, like his biggest and best uh, students, like, you know, the ones that are performing really well. Um, and he takes them to see the minister. And so we go to the minister and we find out that there's some kind of plague going on. And we're, you know, and the guards are just like killing each other and there's sick animals. And then we were trying to figure out what's going on with the minister. So we get to his actual estate, his, the actual building, and uh, we find out that he was the sickest of them all, as the little boy put it, right? And yeah, and so we kill him, and we have to now figure out what's going on, uh, what you know, what what's what's happening in this land all of a sudden. Um, so we meet with Aang, and Aang says, um, "Go, you know, go let the Tengu know." that something is happening. Uh, but before we do that, um, and I, I guess I could have done that yesterday. Um, I don't know if I really wanted to do that yesterday, but um, 
we want to talk to right hand them here right to them right hand them um because he gives us attribute points so as you guys know uh attributes are pretty much what the um so the the attribute point system will eventually in guild wars 2 become the trade system right and it actually the trade system guild wars 2 actually used to function a lot closer to this uh than it does now um because they did change it at some point um but yeah so he actually so there's um for those of you that don't know as you go into guild wars there's two uh two quests that you can take uh for each character that you make that give you an extra 15 attribute points and this is one of them so wherever you're starting where you know wherever you are it's usually around it's usually by the time you get to around level 20 that you get these um quests but uh yeah so and this is something that you will need in order to really pull because 15 attribute points i mean you get you know two quests so you end up with like 30 extra attribute points uh, that's a pretty big like increase in power there um so that's very important to do so we want to do that as soon as possible and we want to do that right now because it's not such it's not that difficult of a uh quest and we also we we get a level 20 with us in the group when we do that mission so uh so yeah uh, so he says you've been inside the minister's estate if you were able to su survive in there then you might just be the person i've been looking for you see i know the location of a great treasure within the estate grounds now that the minister's guard is in chaos a few brave souls might make their way back into the estate and become very enriched i'm heading in that uh in in at any rate join me if you will all right so he has a treasure he wants to share with us lost treasure all right um who doesn't like a good treasure hunt so i hope you guys are doing well so we could get a new armor here i'm, I'm gonna opt out of doing that um, because it's kind of a waste, but yeah, so we go back in. Oh, I gotta get a group. Uh, we go back in, uh, to, um, maybe I'll do the shock. Maybe I'll take her. We haven't taken her with a Isai. All right. So we go back in guys. Uh, and there he is. Um, for this mission though, we do have a, we do have a pet as I, I still, I guess I'm going to still call him Raja. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to summon my uh, Igneous Summoning Stone as well, so. Yeah, there's definitely some sounds that are not working for on my end. I don't know if it's the same for you guys. If it's too loud, let me know. I'll lower it a little bit. Let me know. Okay. Oh, he's already moving on. But yeah, he's powerful. I'm going to try to let him kind of tank some stuff for me. So, yeah. Yeah, see, there's like sound effects on it happening. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if that's like because of all the 3D sounds. I don't understand why it's like that. Oop. I accidentally, I guess, hit reset all. Yeah, see how it's like weird? It sounds really strange in my ears. I don't know why. It's okay. Alright, let's go. Oh, my pet died. I forgot that he's, like, really low level. Pick up. Oh, I don't... Guys, we're gonna have to redo the mission. Uh, I can't have my pet. Um, I accidentally, because we, I didn't take comfort animal with me, so let's redo it. <laughs> let's redo it. I don't know what's going on with the sound. It's really, really strange. I don't know if anyone else is having issues, um, 
I mean, I guess I can do it for headphones, but I don't know how that sounds for you guys. Then if I do it like that, because that sounds it sounds better for me when I when I save have optimized for headphones. Uh, such chaos. It is difficult in such time for a man to know what is right and what is wrong. Difficult, but not impossible, I suppose. All right, so let's redo it. It's still kind of strange to sound to me, but that's okay. Uh, so he says, many thanks for your assistance. Uh, I wanted to see... Oh, moment. Because whenever I have to like click on your guys' thing, I don't want it to stop. Many thanks for your assistance. I have no idea what is happening here. I was making my rounds as usual, and then the next thing I knew, my friends were killing one another. It was a bloodbath. I think it's this one. Yeah, it was a bloodbath. Yellow! We got a yellow die, guys. So, I think Raja already leveled up once. Because he's such low level. So he's like, already a level up. All right, so we follow right hand. We ha we uh, have been this way. Uh, this is where we originally up there is where we originally saw the minister. So, but we're gonna actually go like way across this. Um... Oh, did I summon the legionnaire? I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to summon. I summoned Ridlock, guys, but that costs me a skill point to do this, so that's okay. There's Ridlock. Ridlock fighting with us. That's okay. We'll be fine. He's he's stronger than I feel like he's stronger than the Igneous, uh, than the uh, Fiery. But who knows? Whatever. I hope you guys are doing well. This place is even more. So this is where the minister died. This place is even more dangerous than I imagined. Dead guards everywhere. Keep me moving. It is not far. It is not far now. That's a lie. Because we, we're like just started. We have to go like, look where we have to go. Alright, and knock on wood that we don't get any uh, internet problems today. We really shouldn't, but um, yeah, I don't know. I am getting new equipment as well sent to my house. Don't know when that's getting there, but where did he go? Oh, he walked all the way back up there. I was like, where did he go when he walked back? It's always weird having Ridlock with us. Like, you know, in this timeline, Char is still the enemy. You know, like, in, in this time period. So, um, he says, we're almost there. Keep your eyes out for those guards. Something very strange is going on. Uh, we also heard, remember, we also heard of a dark figure uh, that, like, appeared and then disappeared. So... Very, very strange. Wow, look at Redlock, Jesus. Whooping ass. Look at all these enemies. Oh no. Oh my god, Ridlock is gonna fight them all. He doesn't care. I just don't wanna lose the NPC. There's another crane somewhere around here. Right? Where, where is the crane? Did it not spawn? Does it not spawn because I captured it? That would be crazy. Second Moa, go! Sorry, Moa birds. Yeah, we're keeping with the theme of birds for now. Uh, I think I'm gonna do the crabs, the crab later, uh, the red crab, the lurker. But that comes at a much later point. So I just wanna, I'm just gonna do the uh, the crane for now. It's pretty cool. I wanna use some, I wanna use some unique pets that we don't necessarily have. I could get, I could get the panda if I were to invest the time, but I don't really. Nice. 
Ooh. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope everyone is good. Uh, I worked a lot today. Um, like, way too much on my day off. Oop, I don't know what that was. Oh no. Wait for me. Uh, of course, if he dies, we have to redo the mi uh, mission again. And he will just um, run. Run for your lives. They have all gone mad. Do not look behind you. Just run. They're coming. Was the guy. It was the one friendly guy that walked our way. Um, keep up. The treasure is near, is what he says. The treasure is near. Oh, it's so beautiful going through Kanata again. The other one in general is just really good. I was thinking about like, you know, making a video today. I really, I'm like, man, I want to play like Freezing again. Oh God, I'm getting attacked here. Ooh, our pet leveled up again. Nice. Alright, so we have another guard over here that still hasn't gone mad yet. Hito? Hito, is that you? Are you ill? Yes, he is. Kill him! Hito, why are you looking at me like that? Wait, stop! Get away from me! Oh, gods, no! The world has gone mad. The minister is dead. My closest friend has tried to kill me. Uh, surely we have to send it into the bowels of the underworld. There is no escape from this darkness. We're all going to die. So we're going to the Tempku Caverns. And he's just running past. Um, it's kind of... It, it's, it's... That's always one thing that... I think was hard for ArenaNet coming from Guild Wars 1. Because in Guild Wars 1, you're always a human. So you can make, like, you can have characters talk about the gods and, you know, blah blah blah, all this stuff without having to worry about what your character thinks or whatever. You know, you can have a, oh my god, he's running ahead so far. Like, I'm just trying to collect items. My, the treasure is this way, friend. You're what? You're what? Is um, and I think that was one of the things, right? Because you now have five playable races that all have their own belief system and they don't believe in the gods. You know, the gods aren't the be all end all of like everything. So it was, I think there was like some difficulty they had with writing. Uh, so he says, hurry, they may, uh, they may have her even now. They may have her. What's going on? What do you what do you mean? Aren't you looking for a treasure? What are you talking about? Oh, what's what's happening here? My beloved, you came for me. Thank the gods. Precious treasure. My heart soars to see you save. I feared uh, the worst. Now let us escape this place. Ah, a moment, beloved. I must speak to my companion. So he lied to us. He said, I must level with you, my friend. There is no treasure but my beloved... Jajania or something uh, though her name means precious treasure in the ancient tongue I suppose she's not quite the treasure you were hoping for I apologize for the deception but I do not think anyone foolhardily enough to come in here with me simply for the sake of 
holding uh, of helping me find her. I will not ask more of you. We can find our own uh, our way back safely. Here, there's uh, something to compensate. All right, and he gives us these. Yeah, there's definitely something going on with the uh, sound. I don't know what's happening there, but yeah, we get we have twenty points now, um, which is like crazy. So we're just gonna invest some of these. All right, so beast mastery. All right, so he kind of lied to us, which is fine. Whatever. Uh, he compensates us fairly good uh with that so we can go back we don't have to walk all the way luck luckily uh we get to teleport i don't know it's a shame that sound is like really weird maybe it's just weird for me but i don't think it is based on what i can see in the uh, sound thing over on the side it's like it sounds really it looks it looks like it's strange for everyone because it's now really really quiet even though it shouldn't be that quiet and i i don't understand very very strange what's happening here i don't know uh, i'm gonna pause the yellow guy oh i can't double click so used to guild wars 2 where i can just like double click things let's see how much money we've been making oh we've been making some money nice all right, so now our mission, and there's no other quests here either. You you take that quest and that's it. Uh, it's a small little outpost, but uh, we have to warn the Tengu at the Airy. Airy? Airy? I call it Airy because I feel like it has to do with air. Because they're bird people. Uh, and remember, he we were here, guys. We went to these woods right here, like right over there or or, or down there or something. To collect those roots that we needed. Um, or that's what it was? Was it roots? I don't remember what it was. But yeah, so we were all the way down here. Um, there is another thing that we were told to come see. Uh, and I think I wanted... So there's a boss here. We can actually defeat this guy. Because he's really not that tough. I don't think. He's an assassin. Oh. He should be okay. Alright, cool. So plus two. Alright, so we're gonna go through here. Um so we're we're on the other side of Kenya province, but I did talk about this uh other place. Um which is out here. Well, I thought it was this island, but we're actually going to go over here. Uh, we get this little, like, little wall with a door. Like, we I, we can't go in there. I don't know I don't know what they keep in there. Um, but there is a door to get into that area. Uh, here's Ongsang Island. I thought it was this island up here, but it's actually down here. Um, and this is what we were told by Ludo. Remember Ludo told us about this place? He says that Kappa, uh, this is where the Kappa make their home. So, we're actually at the home of the, the Kappa um, a long time ago. Again, not accessible to us in Guild Wars 2. Um, and Kappa in Guild Wars 1 were actually water elementalists, guys. Which is really cool. They use like ice spears and ice magic and stuff. Uh, but yeah, but there's not anything going on here. Like Ongsang Island is one of those things where I'm like, why did they even? Why did they even make this? Like, what? What's the? What's the reason? Like they seem to have just like fun with the map and like created like random things. Even drops a water wand because all we have, I mean, we go there's another bridge, and you can go all the way out here. There's a little, there's a little thing where you can see ship a shipwreck. You can see shipwreck, 
I don't think there's any... I don't, I don't think there's any quest that even takes you here. Maybe there is a quest at some point that you have to come here for. Um, but yeah, um, it's, it's kind of weird, right? So that's all, that's all there is. Nothing else here, and then you can move on. So, kind of strange. I love the little trees, though. The trees are very cool that they have here. Yeah, they have those trees and those, like, weird, like, twisty trees. Um, this is, like, one of my favorite parts. You get those, like, rocky beach area out, out here. Okay, why are they grunting so loud? Alright, we actually have to go down here. So we took a little detour. Um, but we have to have, have, actually have to go around this way. Actually get some Tengu here, and they are um, friendly. So, kind of shows you some of the some of the Tengu here. And there it is. So there's Talon Silverwing. Um, but we have Sor Anaclar. We were told that uh, she is the leader of the Tengu currently. So we're gonna go talk to her, and we're gonna let her know what's going on. Alright, if there was a good time for outsiders to visit Eri, this is certainly not that time. My father's murder, murder has made us more wary of strangers than usual. So there's actually a backstory to this, and I kind of want to just like stop for a second. So there's, um, rem remember Panaku that we met last night, or yeah, last night? Um, he was the, he was one of the assassin trainers. So Jinzo is the one, and then Panaku was the other one. And there's actually a quest, I think, and this is for the, I think this is when you're an assassin, maybe? I, I could be wrong on that, but um, uh, this is it's actually uh, a quest, and this might be part of the, like, training for the assassin, even, where you, where you come down here and you kill um, Sor Honorclaw's father. Um, and Panaku... Uh, is like you know he like we don't I don't think we get blamed for it or something like he ends up getting blamed for it I want to say uh, and then there's like a quest where you have to like uh, I think there's a quest later where you have to like kind of redeem him or something like that um, I could be wrong on that again I'm not quite sure on the details but yeah anyway so so there is a murder that does happen and indeed it has to do with her father and this actually happens in game and after that, she's just like, yeah, really not a good time to come here because, uh, you know, now that this has happened, that uh, one, w the leader of the Tengu was killed by a human. We're kind of like, um, what do you guys want? You know, um, now, mind you, for those of you that have only played Guild Wars 2, Panaku actually is kind of an important character in like a weird way in Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons because... He was the, um, when you look at the Spectre um, Elite Specialization for the Thief, he was the, he was these, uh, he was the poster child, right? He was the one that they said, um, he kind of turned to the good side and became, instead of like killing people, he wanted to become a healer. So he used the, his mastery of the dark arts to like heal his his allies or whatever right and this is the character that we're talking about he you know he apparently there's some kind of weird journey that he has as a character where he's this murderous guy that just goes around and he's just like 
this um, assassin for hire uh, kills the Tengu um, leader. I think for money he does it. Um, it's like a like a, a contract or whatever that he takes for money. Um, and then I guess eventually, you know, as he because he's gonna be, he kind of. I think he's going to join us on our journey or something. I think he's going to be one of those characters that's going to be able to be in our party. So he's pretty much in canon. He's supposed to be traveling along with us and kind of having this whole uh, journey. And then by the end of it, he's maybe realized the error of his ways and uh, wants to become good. And uh, before the end of his life some point, at some point, he learned to uh, heal his allies or support his allies and um yeah and kind of pass that on to other people and creating the specter uh line of assassins so to say pretty much so uh it's kind of cool that that kind of you know this lead this, this dialogue right here leads into something in guild wars 2 is kind of cool uh so we're warning them um the afflicted creature yeah i'll read about that minister cho has died of plague that is terrible news indeed but your story sheds light on our on our recent troubles. We have had reports of Tengu killed by strange bees previously unseen hereabouts. It sounds very similar to these afflicted creatures you describe. Talon here was summoned to destroy the beast, but since you have some knowledge of these things, I am certain that he would welcome your help. Please go with Talon and help him destroy the afflicted creature. So we met these afflicted creatures last night. The uh, be the uh, minister being the very first one that we meet, right? This disgusting, gross, like, cryptus, you know, looking like a demon creature. Um, and we have to, we, we kill it. And then we go back into the state and actually see a bunch more of them, right? They've now, like, started spreading uh, the plague has now started spreading a little bit. Um, and apparently, they're even been sighted way outside of... This is the estate, right? Way outside the estate, uh, there's another creature that's been sighted. So this is not just a sole incident in the, in the estate. And seems to have uh, actually spread. So we actually have an afflicted creature down here. Um, yeah, and Talon Silverwing comes with us. So he's one of the warrior trainers. Um, and he comes with us to help us kill this afflicted creature. Yeah. Alright, well fought human. Now let us return to Sor Anarcha and tell her of our triumph. Alright, so we've defeated another one. But who knows how many more there are out there, right? So, I love the little hut huts that they live in. They look really cool. Uh, you have performed a great service for the Tengu this day. I wish that I could say that the danger has passed, but I fear that it has only just begun. Talon, I think it likely that our young friend here will soon be called away on another mission. Can you stay and protect the village? And so, um, Talon stays. Uh, while you're w away dealing with that plague creature, Aang the ephemeral, ephemeral left a message for you. Left a message for you. Apparently, several of your fellow students are visiting Kai Tang Village on the Penjang Peninsula, but Master Togo has sensed a growing threat in that area, and he believes that the students might be in mortal danger. He wants you to travel with all speed to Kai Tang Village in Penjang Peninsula and help them deal with with any threat. All right, we will leave at once. So we already know where this is, right? Remember, so they're actually leading us this way all the way down. But we knew we know that this is Kaitan Village, so we can actually go and travel here. Um, our characters, uh, our friends will be lower level than before. I want to say um, I'm going to be doing all of these side quests um, in a minute. Uh, we're just going to kind of do this uh, before we move on from this side of the island, um, and we're going to be doing. Uh, we're gonna do those side. There's a there's a bunch of side quests. Remember how um, in the monastery there were some side quests and stuff. So we're gonna be doing those. Um, so remember Sister Tai? We dealt with her. There's Hakuru, Ako, and Sian. Don't know if these are uh, profession in in the profession in any profession. If they if they. Uh, uh, if they're like, I mean, they're clearly supposed to be students, but I don't know if they really 
are part of any of the quests or anything that you see around. Uh, so yeah, so we, uh, the village is actually getting invaded right now by these sickened guards. So we have all of these, they're all part of our group. They're low level, um, but we can most certainly help them to defend the village. Um, Hakuru is about to die. It's okay if they die, I think. I love that they went right for our healer as well. It's very, very great. Love all that. And of all of that. So she says, it is good to see you, Pedmaster Rally. Master Togo sent word that help was coming, and here you are. You arrived just in time. Master Togo sent word that he wants to speak with you when you're finished here. He asked that you meet him in the monas uh, back at the monastery in Lenok Courtyard. All right, so let's go talk to Master Togo. So what's going on, right? We we uh, th There's crazy things about... Uh, so let's talk to Master Togo. So we have defended the village now, but clearly this is spreading and we're not containing this at all. And uh, yeah, so we, we have to go talk to the master. Uh, we're pretty much like a leader now among the people because we're, you know, we, we were one of the bigger, like one of the uh, students kind of, you know, because we were presented, we, we were supposed to get to present it to Master uh, Minister Cho uh, by Master Togo. And, uh, you know, it, it really shows that we, you know, we're pretty much like this top-notch student and we got our ranger insignia. Um, I, th I think it's supposed to show that like some time has passed where you're training in the, in the, in the, ma uh, in the monastery and it's not just like, oh yeah, the same day, uh, you master everything and you become this amazing ranger and uh you solve all of the things of the world in like one day i mean that's not really i don't think in canon it's probably been like you know a long time that we've been here so i don't know i'm glad to hear you were able to warn the angshu tengu and help them to drive off the plague creatures assaulting the village i expected no less from you pedmaster Rally. although i i'm loath to place my students in the way of danger i find that the current crisis leaves me little choice I send Yijo Tan into the fray, and I hope that I can continue to count on you as well. So he, Yijo was hanging out with him, but he had to actually send him out onto the island to help deal with this crisis, right? Uh, to kind of, like, help him spread his control, like, his, you know, using his students, he has to, like, kind of control the situation on the island. Uh, Pet Master Ali, I have yet another favorite task of you. I believe that we have narrowed down the source of the plague to the eastern side of the island. I've sent most of the instructors and students there to investigate, and I would like you to join them. Speak to guard Su uh, Zucaro about traveling to Saitong Harbor. He knows a hidden path that will get you there quickly. Brother Pawan, remember he was one of the um, one of the uh, monk trainers that we uh, kind of dealt with, is waiting to help show you the way. All right, yes, Master. So uh, before we do this, right, uh, the road less traveled. So we're actually going to we're going to leave this side of the island. We're going to go to the side that is actually accessible to us in Guild Wars 2. We're actually going to visit all these th all these places now, um, move on. But before that, I do want to do all the side quests uh, that take place on this side of the island, uh, just because I don't really want to... Um, you know, I don't want to really come back at some later point to do all of these. Um, so it'll be a nice break in between to kind of do some of these quests. All right. So we have some over there. Uh, remember, we dealt we dealt with um, Captain Jing Yu. Jing, 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 Hu, Jing Hu. Uh, I'm glad to see you, Pedmaster Rally. I was telling a friend of mine about your run-in with the Naga at Zen Zenai Falls. Remember we did we did that? Yes. He's a scout, so I thought he would be interested. He was, and in fact, he thinks he might have an idea of where they're coming from. If you're not too busy uh, with your studies, you should speak with him about the Naga problem. His name is Scout Shen Fai, and he lives in Haiju Lagoon. Perhaps together, you can pinpoint the source of these foul creatures. Okay, so this actually takes us to the other side. So that's kind of cool that we, we picked this up. Um, but again, we're not going to do this. But 
uh, yeah, so we'll do that later. Uh, so apparently, um, you know, because the water source, mind you guys, uh, is over here, right? Runs out of the mountain down into this thing, and uh, there's a, a cave system underneath that runs through all of Cantha, supplying them with, like, fresh water, okay? Um, and that's coming from this mountain right here, which is just, like, this amazing thing. Um, so we saved that from the Naga, but they're like, where are these Naga coming from? Well, apparently they're also coming from the eastern side. So something is, you know, we have the plague coming from the eastern side, but then also that seems to perhaps drive the Naga to the eastern side. Like, who knows, right? If that's connected. Um, they say some, some are born with knowledge, while others must bury their heads in books and scrolls to gain it. Yijo Tan is the former, is the former. Learning has always come easy to him. Perhaps that is why it is so disconcerting to him that he has fallen behind in his practical application course. Of course, you know, Gijo, Gijo, he went right to the library and checked out more books than I could read in a year. I told him that burying his nose in books will not help him in, his, in this class. What he really needs is a real life study buddy. Someone like Sister Joy, uh, Joy Tu Ju in Zumai Village. I told him I would show him how to get to Zumai Village, but I just found out about a quiz in my next class, and I really need to study. Will you do me a huge favor and take him there? So this is a little bit out of canon, because we were told that uh, Jiru Tan was sent away to help um, with some of the uh, problems going on. But that's okay, we're just going to act like this is happening before he does this or something. Um, so we have to go out and actually help him. Um get to um get to zumai village where he can train uh on his practical application this is actually going to play into the character of jijo tan um so this is the super arrogant guy that's like oh i'm the best i'm the coolest right i sense a kindred spirit unit allow me to introduce myself i'm jijo tan you're pet master Riley, are you not i'm pleased to make your acquaintance it's kind of weird because i don't think that quest was available before we hung out before we went to minister jo cho's estate uh, but maybe it was. So imagine that we did this quest before we went to Minister Cho's estate with him. Um, he's not super arrogant, but um, he's kind of... I mean, he, he thinks he's... he's, You know, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he's a little arrogant in a way. So uh, Yazo Yin, Yazo Yin um, told you that I'm falling behind in my practical application, did she? Well, I'm ashamed to admit it, but what she said is correct. I've never failed a class before, and I have no intention of doing so now. So, if what is take some extra tutoring, then so be it. If you could t show me t uh, how to get to Zumai Village, I will be in your debt. Okay, so, um, I, yeah, I guess maybe I misremembered his character. Maybe I thought he was a little bit more arrogant than he actually is. But, um, so we, uh, this kind of plays into his character. So, he is this um, person that has fallen behind on his studies, right? And, um... He, um, he, uh, he, he, his solution is always to just, like, read about it in books. But, like, you know, again, practical application, like, actually going into, you know, into actual combat is a lot different than reading a book about it. Um, and he's just kind of, he is just not, that's, like, one thing that he's probably not good at is actually going out and doing things and it's going to play into his character because mind you at this point in time um you know as we are going on to the to, to the east side of the of the island uh we hear that he's been sent out on his own to kind of um you know help with the plague problem uh we're fine because we're good you know we're, we're master ranger and we have gotten our insignia and our practical application is like great you know we took all those classes for uh learning how conditions work and hexes work and interruptions work and and we aced all of that right so we're good in in that regard but uh he probably isn't as as much um you know so uh it's kind of a little scary to think that he's out and about on his own um yeah and like i said it kind of plays into uh the larger story even a little bit But maybe the sister can help him, right? Um, we also have... There's a couple of uh, quests out this way that we want to do. And Jiru Tan says, Ah, I can feel my brain getting heavier with the weight of knowledge already. We're almost there. 
That's not really how it works, but sure, whatever you want to say. There's the Naga again. I'm collecting all the... I always... I, I, I know a lot of people that like play this game and they don't collect any of the white items on the ground. They only collect like the golden stuff and the green stuff perhaps and you know any important like token or whatever. Um, but I collect all of this stuff. I can just sell it in the store and make money. Uh, a thousand thanks for bringing me to Zoo My Village, Pedmaster Raleigh. I would stay and chat some, but I think I best track down Sister Joy, uh, Ch Choi Ju, Ju and get to study. I don't know how to pronounce half these names. Um, all right, so we're now at Zoo My Village, and uh, she's right over there. Uh, she was originally the sister that we talked to um when we were kind of exploring the island and uh yeah so we can talk to her and let's see what she has to say the way enough blessings upon you child are you a new student at the monastery oh yeah i don't know why she has the exact same so she she was the one i kind of give us a breakdown of everything that's on qua vale um or even you know haiju lagoon and the caverns and jaya bluffs and hunzing pier um you have escorted Jiu tan here very good. This instructor told me to expect him. Not many students are willing to give up their precious free time to a tutor, but uh, Yijo obviously takes his studies very seriously. I've heard that he's one of Master Togo's favorites this year, and now I understand why. Thank you again for showing him to, how to get here. Okay, so we dropped him off. Um, let's go report back to the lady. Uh, oh, wow. We got to teleport right next to her. Awesome. All right. Hello. Good to see you again. Oh, hey, you told me that you escorted him to my village. He was really grateful, and so am I. If I can return the favor in the future, let me know. All right, so we have done this side quest. Um, I don't think there is any other things that we need to do. Um, so all, like, vendors and stuff. Uh, okay, so let's go. Uh, I don't think our headmaster has anything for us, does he? No. Okay. Uh, let's see... I don't think their dialogue changes. I'm just double checking. Hello, dialogue. Different. No. Uh, all right. Let's pick up the. Uh, this is uh, going into what we were talking about last night, um, and we will have to see how this goes. Let me take a sip of water. You're a hard person to find has been looking high and low for you since the first time you met in Sankwa Vale. When did I meet him in Sankwa Vale? Last I saw him, he was in uh, Penjang Peninsula. I will check there first. Wait, wait, wait a minute. That kind of throws me off. What do they mean when we first meet him? Um. Okay, yeah, I don't know. They reference a meeting that never happens. So you don't actually meet this character um, at all like before so i'm not sure exactly what she means uh she might be referencing when we first went to kaitan village there was a conversation um that he was having with one of the crimson skull right and that's what this leads into um so remember remember the conversation from last night that they had where um this uh crimson skull lady comes to the village uh kaitan village right outside of zumai village here and talks to farmer zen joe saying you have to give us like what like two thirds or something of all the grain um and he's like you're ridiculous like go away um like all the stuff right he's just like you're out of your mind you're crazy uh and we don't need your help we don't need your protection whatever and she says that's not the end of it and uh and yeah and i think that's what she's referencing but i i, I think they just might have like put that wrong or something um so now he's looking for us okay very interesting so let's go find it and he's right out here so they were having the conversation right here um, and he's right out here now, so let's talk to him and see what he has to say. Uh, I hope your travels 
uh, have been pleasant, Headmaster Raleigh. The changing of the season, uh, seasons is wondrous, is it not? I expect the land to yield a bountiful harvest this year. Cash crops, okay? So uh, we get the uh, we get three seeds from him, and he says, "There you are, Headmaster Raleigh. Planting season is upon us, but the farmers are already short-handed. I need you to sow seeds to ensure that the island will bear enough food at harvest time. Here, take these seeds into the fields and kneel down to gently plant them." Just under the soil's surface. You know how to kneel, don't you? Um, yeah, so we, we know how to kneel. Um, uh, yeah, okay. So now we have to plant some crop. And that uh, will help the farmers. So we're kind of helping. I don't know why he was looking. You know, if he has the time to look for us everywhere, uh, he has the time to go plant these freaking seeds himself. Um, and it looks like plenty of stuff is growing here there's a lot of grapes growing uh but i guess we are kneeling to grow more all right one's done but you know as a student of the monastery we have to help out i think that's actually a pretty so for like a for like a you know an island that has a monastery at, at it it or on it um it, it's kind of an interesting way of teaching people right um by helping out around the island they kind of save on like labor in the sense of like oh we can use these students right it's almost like they're like unpaid interns right they're on this island to learn in their respective professions but they can do so by helping the people and helping the the island in general and and you know further their studies that way it's kind of an interesting way of like um m making that work right all right so we have planted that good um so now we can go back i don't know i wonder if his dialogue changes because i'm sure he's going to disappear once i leave uh this area so i want to kind of talk to um the farmer dude The farmer guy. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I want to see if this dialogue changes at all. Maybe, maybe if I talk to him. Oh, that's it. Uh, I just love this little shrine here. It's really cool. They have like some incense burning. It's really cool. I, I love it so much. Um, it's just this little shrine area. That's it. <laughs> All right, going back in so we can report that we have helped him. He was looking high and low for us. Uh, thank you for your help, Headmaster Rally. Because of your efforts, I expect a full harvest when the time is right. All right. So, and we actually level up because of that. Hell yeah. And we can do even more pet mastery now. Look at that. That is 10. That is super good. Super, super good. Uh, I need to check something before I move on with my life here. Okay, yeah. All right, so we have the Emperor's Blade here. Um, and this is going to lead a little bit into uh, this other story, I think, right? Um, so, yeah. So at the Emperor's Command, remember, this is an empire, the Empire of the Dragon. Uh, and right here in Raizu Palace is where uh, the Emperor sits. Um, and he has commanded the Emperor's Blade. Uh, I'm here to handle the Crimson Skull problem and remove Captain... Jing Meng from power. Master Togo wishes his former student to have one last chance to leave this island in peace, and the Emperor has decided to honor to Togo's request. Deliver Togo's ultimatum to Captain Jing Meng, and if the pirates, pirates refuse, I will take action. Okay, so a lot of things are happening here. Um, and the Emperor has decided to honor Togo's request. There is a specific reason why the Emperor decided to honor this re request, okay? Um, just some random head honcho of a monastery asking the emperor for like a request 
um, to, you know, uh, to give this guy another chance. Kind of strange, right? To uh, at at first glance to kind of accept, but there's a specific reason as to why. Um, but then we learned about Captain Jing Meng um, being the former student of Togo's, and uh, that they are the leader of the Crimson Skull here. So you know, this all like has this like. Like I said, we have our own plot going on, but there's all these little side plots going on that you really have to like kind of pay attention to, read the dialogue, kind of understand uh, the different relationships between the people. Um, peace deserves a chance. So we have to now, this is a very dangerous mission because you have to know, go, now go out into the main base, which is down here at this port uh, of the Crimson Skull and deliver to their head honcho this ultimatum and uh that's a little scary uh it's probably gonna get a little scary for us hopefully we can make it through um i think i'm gonna summon for this i'm gonna actually summon uh redlock to help us um so we have to actually go through and do that because we have to fight i mean remember they're not friendly okay they're not friendly the crimson skulls so they're not gonna just let us pass they're gonna fight us until we can fight our way into the um you know into their into their camp and to their leader so we shall do exactly that uh, avoid the kappa we'll go this way we'll follow the road I'll follow the road. Um, one thing I think that Guild Wars 1 has over Guild Wars 2 is that, you know, it builds an atmosphere with the music that plays, uh, right? And, but it's also because you can't just, like, I, I really think that Mounds, particularly Skyscale, ruined a lot of the immersion for me in Guild Wars 2 because I can now zip across the whole area and you miss so many things right i started i started my whole um did you know shorts on youtube because of pretty much people missing all the details right because I, I'm, I'm such a stickler like not stickler but i'm such a fan of like having these details and these interesting little things all around the world but uh you go on your oh we can actually defeat this boss right there and get a morale boost we're gonna do um, and they're Crimson Skull, so it's one of the leaders of the Crimson Skull. We're going to cripple them before we uh, ask them to, to spout their evil deeds. Uh, this is a healer, so we have to be kind of... Um, but yeah, and I, I just... I've, I've never been a fan of giving people, um, you know, early people the, um, the ability to mount up. Um, I, I really think that mounts should be something that is like level 80 only. Um, I, I really think so. Uh, especially when you talk about like Corteria in Guild Wars 2. Uh, there's waypoints everywhere. There's no need to be able to run uh, on a raptor from point A to point B in like 3.5 seconds. There really is not. And uh, I think a lot of the content has been ruined because of that. And I do get the appeal of like, oh yeah, it's a mound or whatever. But I still think that there should be, uh, you know, most MMOs have like not just a level like um, requirement to get on mounts. You can't just use mounts immediately in a lot of uh, in a lot of older MMOs and, and newer. Uh, it's kind of like whatever, um, but in a lot of older MMOs, um, you know, there was always like a level, like what, uh, WoW had it at like level 20, and that was like the slowest mount speed, it was like barely faster than just running around, and I always like that, because it's like, it kind of, you, you still get to explore the world, even, even, uh, even if you're doing it on a mount, you're not doing it super fast, but, you know, unfortunately in Guild Wars 2, uh, that's, just not how it is and that's it's one of the things that I, I find a little irritating that I think that's why Guild Wars uh, 1 has you know has the ability to make me feel immersed a little bit better and kind of really pay attention to the details because I have to like walk and walking is really slow in Guild Wars 1 
you know, and walking around these areas, I and I can't just like teleport wherever I want to go, and I can't just like, you know, there's no waypoints and stuff, but uh, I have to walk around, and that gives me opportunity to, you know, enjoy the environment around, you know, and we kind of miss miss some of that stuff um, in Guild Wars 2. Uh, if if you don't, that's why I lots of times I I put. I give myself the rule of like not using mounts when I'm leveling like a new character and just kind of want to walk around or even like on on characters on like level 80 characters if I'm like just kind of doing something in the open world or something and I'm walking around and I'm doing map completion and stuff there's times where I'm like you know what I'm not gonna mount up I'm just gonna kind of like immerse myself in this map and hang out because even if I jump on my raptor it feels like I'm just uh, I'm just like I don't know. I, I feel like I'm just doing a job rather than enjoying myself in the game. So, but you know, it, I mean, to each their own. It's just not how it is in Guild Wars 2, and that's okay. Uh, I still think that the mounds are like the best mounts ever. I think that's something that we can all agree on. Um, the best mounts in MMOs. So, you know, it's it's a it's a double edged sword. I think. Alright, so once we cross this bridge, we're actually getting closer to, uh, we were down there, we had to deal with this lady down there last night, that was like a 20 minute fight for no reason. Um, but there's actually the, the Port Kaimu, is their actual, um, the actual place that they are at. Uh, I thought this would be a lot harder, but I think that's not this quest, but it's the following quest. Because uh, we're going to have to come back here at some point. And uh, I thought this was going to be a lot harder, but it's not because I didn't really remember how it works. Um, so these are friendly. We're going into the camp. These are, um, yeah, as you can see, the weapon racks here with like bloody skulls and stuff. <laughs> kind of scary. Um, yeah. And uh, we can actually, so this is the former student that we were told about, right? So we can talk to him. I see Togo is still tuning out idealistic or turning out. Idealistic fools. I was like you once, head swimming with ideals of nobility and honor. I shall tell you a secret. It is all lies. There is no honor, no nobility, just money. Okay, so we give him... What is this, hmm? So that old fool wants me to leave peacefully, does he? I think not. The Crimson Skull is here to stay. Take that back to your master, Togo. And while you are uh, at it, tell the people of Zuma Village they have two choices. Surrender to me and die quickly. Or fight me and die in agony. Okay, so uh, Zumai Village, you know, Kaitan Village was where they were having the conversation. This was uh, the farmer, right? Farmers uh, Shang Gyo and the Crimson Skull. So this is kind of leading into that because um, he now has gotten the ultimatum, and that was like kind of the the final, the 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 last straw, right? And that was just kind of like the the. The, the, this is it, right? This is, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm done. Like, you want to give me an ultimatum? You want to get me off this island? And these people, you know, they don't want to listen to what I tell them. So this is not what we do. We're going to come and kill them all to, sh to make other people uh, realize their er the errors of their ways. I also want to point this out. There's the little dragon statue. One of the big things that I was um, weirdly, like, theorizing about uh, before End of Dragons came out, where I said, you know, maybe these depict the the underwater dragon, right? And um, they were built on purpose. Like, that's why it's the Dragon Empire and all this stuff. And I wasn't, like, too far off because this is pretty much, like, I mean, this looks pretty close to Suwan, right? In the way that uh, she's depicted. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. They never showed any of those. Uh, they never showed up again. Because um, there's one here, and then there's one uh way up here and we've never been able to go to either of those locations in or not yet at least in guild wars 2 um so are they still there do they have any meaning we don't know all right so let's talk to the emperor's blade and tell him to you know pretty much f off because that is uh pretty much what what he told us I expected as much captain Jing Mang has assigned his own death warrant the emperor thanks for your effort Hey, I'm doing well. How are you, Emily? All right, so we turn that in. 
The Emperor feared Captain Jingmeng would not see reason. Scouts report that Togo's former student has ordered his cohorts to attack Zumai village, and my forces from Kainang City cannot possibly reach us in time now. Yet we must go on the offensive to save Zumai village and the monastery that lies beyond uh, beyond it. If you would serve your Emperor, head to Zhangkuo Vale and Penjing Peninsula. Eliminate any Crimson Skull you see. If you accept this task, heed one final warning. The Crimson Skull that besieged the village are numerous. Only the bravest and the strongest of heroes have any hope of success. Show no mercy. You will get none in return. We shall do so. We are going to do this. So uh, we know that, you know, the, the Crimson Skull operates out of Port Kaimu, right? And they're going to be attacking Kaitan Village. They're going to be moving across the peninsula here and attack us, right? They're like out here in number. There's a ton of them, right? They're going to move straight in. But we also know that when we moved... Uh, across the mountains, there was a bunch of them. Like, remember Jin? I was talking about Jin. She's like, she usually hangs out right over here. She drops the bow that we can find. There's a bunch of them out here. There's a little camp they have out here. Um, so they're kind of spread on this side. So they're going to actually attack from both sides to try to take over the village. That's good. Good to hear. Uh, did you, I, I hope you watched the video. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, I mean, you know, I, I don't know what you think of my my speculations and stuff like that uh but yeah so um yeah so anyway so we're gonna go out here and we're gonna defend it from the northern forces and then go and for uh, defend from the southern forces um this is look look at this look at how many enemies there are there are some people around here that are helping um but these are just you know i mean they're not you know they're, they're not they're not vets like they're they're, they're just kind of people of the island and they're not they're not made look they're dying left and right um we have to defend them we have to defend these people the, these farmers there's a mender I did. I love the video. I always enjoy hearing your ideas. It, uh, it, it makes an, the announcement so much more fun. Well, I'm glad. Thank you. Um, it's really funny. I had a good. I had a, I had a really good laugh, and I, I didn't even tell you yesterday. Um, but I read the conversation that you guys had on uh, Chicken's um, Discord, where you guys were talking about like what are the most important things um, to you in the uh, like in the game or whatever. And uh, Chicken, you know, he was, he, it was funny because he was just like, oh yeah, stories at the very end because you know nothing about it. And I just kind of had a good laugh and I'm like, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't know how much of the story that you know, but it's always so interesting because you always, you always watch all my videos and you always listen to everything that I have to say. So I'm like, well, I feel like she knows more than, than, than some other people because she's watched my videos. Like simply because of that, uh, she's, you know, better informed than some other people that would be playing the game for uh you know in that same time frame or whatever you know because there's some people that don't pay any attention to any of the things that are happening um look guys there's so many enemies just invading Ooh, we're gonna go for the uh, getting the healer there we don't want him to heal we want him to die luckily we're already level 11 so but it kind of it made me chuckle because it was just like well you know i mean i feel like she knows a lot more than perhaps she leads on i mean not saying that it's like your favorite part of the of the game or whatever or, you know i i get a lot of people don't care um to you know they don't play mmos for the for the story they play it for you know whatever fun interact like you know being able to play with your friends and doing things like that you know i mean this big world i've played through the story but i've uh learned everything about the story from you because you make it more interesting well thank you i appreciate it. Uh, um, I try, you know, I don't know. I get, I get very, pa as we all know, I get a little, I get passionate about the worlds that I'm in and the characters that I play. I'm about to die. Okay, I was going to say, I'm like, I'm literally about to die. Uh, this guy is level 15. He is much stronger than any of us. Uh, let's get this Mesmer first. Okay. Uh, wait, there's just, oh, we killed the other guy? I, I guess we did. Really? That was fast. I thought he was like, look at all this loot. Jesus. All right, that's it. So we, we defended the one side of the village, and we have to now go. Yeah. 
that's what makes it fun um but yeah i you know i i um to me you know the to me the story is just like a huge part i just really enjoy the world that arena has created and i try to immerse myself in like other uh into other worlds as well but you know i've just spent so much time it's so much easier to do that on a world that constantly updates right because like oh look we de really defended all the peasants here none of the peasants died I don't think. um you know it, it's harder to do that in like you know like xenoblade for example like i love the xenoblade games and uh once i can afford uh a new uh capture card um we will be going we i i actually want to what i would like to do is i'd actually like to replay all of it i know that we played the first game um through but we didn't do it on stream i i did just like a playthrough of it but i kind of want to do a stream now that i have played through the whole series i know what the important things that are going to be coming like i i kind of understand the story because the thing is i recently played through it and i i did you know i didn't do it off stream but i, I played through it because i have the whole series here and i've never had it and it's one of my favorite game series or you know i had only played the first one i'd never played any of the other ones so it was what you know xenoblade chronicles one is like a very important game in my life i feel like uh i have a lot of nostalgia for it and uh so i recently played through the whole series and it was kind of i i did it in a big mistake because i did it in the sense that i played so i played xenoblade chronicles one you know i i did that on the channel right and then we played future um what's it called future connected future connected is the like thing or whatever um afterwards and then i played the second xenoblade chronicles 2 i then played the land of torna which is actually a prequel story to xenoblade chronicles 2 and then i played xenoblade chronicles 3 and then they have future redeemed which is a prequel story to xenoblade chronicles 3 now, I did that because when I looked up how to best play him, that's what they told me to do. All, everyone said, nope, just play the base game and then play the DLC or the whatever right after the fact because it's just going to be better that way. I don't feel that way. I feel like I missed out on making, like, if I were to explain it to someone, I feel like there's a lot of connections that I missed out on. Yes, you do get spoiled on some of the things if you play the DLC before the actual game because it's a prequel to it. Um, and, and there, there's some info where it's like, oh, th we already know what, what's going on here. We already know what's going on there, but, uh, it's kind of weird to like Xenoblade Chronicles three specifically was kind of weird to me because we went in, uh, I went into it thinking we're going to see, uh, entrance, uh, cause they do an interesting way of combining the, the worlds together, uh, of Xenoblade Chronicles one and two. And, um, you know, and I thought we we're going to see a lot more of Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 um, as we go into 3. But it was kind of like there wasn't that much. And then I played the DLC and I was just like, so much of 1 and 2. And I'm like, you know, from some for someone that's just coming from playing 1 and 2, you would want to play the stuff that has to do with 1 and 2 and then go into the stuff that doesn't have that much to do. You know, kind of like, it's a better flow that way. So... Uh, but yeah, anyways, at some point I will be playing Xenoblade Chronicles uh, through the series again on stream. We'll do that uh, once I can get another capture card. So, uh, you know, to be to be determined when that happens. Um, all right, so we have to defend the other side now. So we defended the northern side of the Crimson Skull coming and kind of like probably from this camp, I'm guessing, because that's I think that's like their big camp that they have out here. Um, and they are coming our way. See, these peasants are fleeing. Um, they're going into the village. They're like, oh, no. Uh, and we have the guard here with the guard captain, actually, um, that are uh, Canton guards that are here to defend um, the people as well. And they leave, like, a perfect spot right here for us to, like, okay. All right, going in. It's super good. It's a, it's a really good series. It is definitely one of those. And um, it it was supposed to be... So, you know, of course, after the fact, I had to kind of, like, go, like, snoop around on Reddit and see, like, what's going on with the series. Because uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 just rela released last year, I want to say. Um, so it's fairly new. And, and 
uh, you know, it's just kind of like, oh my god, is there another one coming? Because they they don't really, um, you know, it, it, it ends a little bit on a cliffhanger, I will say, okay? It, it ends a little bit of on like, on like a, oh, what's to come after this, right? So immediately I'm thinking, oh my god, are they working on a new game or whatever? Uh, only to find out that, no, they're done. It was supposed to be a trilogy and they have told the story. Um, but then, kind of strange, because I think... And I, I don't think they realized how popular the series was going to get because then I feel like they tr backtracked a little bit because then one of the, uh, one of the, the I guess the game director or whatever he is, I don't know, one of the people that made the game um, kind of said that, oh yeah, this is not the end for the, uh, for the uh, Xenoblade universe and there's going to be other things happening. I mean, it's just kind of like, it, it wasn't really backtracking, but it seemed more, he seemed more um open to having like possibilities of perhaps like continuing and doing other things oh my god there's a whole group of them okay you guys defend there you're all gonna die but i want to look at these guys they're they're being smart about this can i i have to go all the way around look at this they're attacking the village oh my god there's a bunch of them down there that i didn't even see all right Um, but yeah, so there's gonna be more to come. I guess they're I, I guess they're finished in the sense uh, he, I, I think he had to like go back and explain a little bit about it because he he said that they're done in the sense of like you know a, a, a clear cut like Xenoblade Chronicles, right? Um, so because they have made other games before, uh, I think it was called the Z uh, Xeno Gear Saga or something like that, right? And I never played those games, um, but people were speculating that perhaps they're going to combine those um, those games in some way with like another series and kind of like have these things lean into it or going back to making like Xeno, Xeno Gear games instead of Xenoblade games and um, you know and just kind of do it in different ways so I, I guess that's kind of what he was talking about like yeah we're done with Xenoblade Chronicles but we're maybe going to do something else that gonna that's going to play into like you know that's gonna play into the story like maybe in the same universe um but just creating like a different game maybe like uh, maybe it's gonna play differently or something i don't know but um yeah it's a really good game series and it's it's very like oh my god i got like attached to all the characters and i was like this is crazy and um it's really hard for me like if anyone were to ask me like well which one of the three is your favorite that would be really tough for me i want to say the first one still uh to me um, I, I know that I feel like I feel like the one thing that the first one doesn't have compared to the other uh, two is the combat. The combat is definitely um, as the series goes on, it's a little it's, it's a lot more intuitive uh, as you go into into two like two has a lot of improvements on the combat. Um, I did have my frustrations. I did stream and I did have my frustrations and I, I think some of the stuff holds but for the like second half of the game uh it does become a little bit easier and it does become a little like once you kind of understand a lot of the things it does become it flows a lot better but then three i think does it in a way where it's like uh it that style of combat like it perfects it in a lot of ways where um it, it's just really good in three um and it's, it's super fun and it flows really well and it's really easy to understand um and yeah So definitely a good a good series for anyone that wants to play a good RPG uh, and just kind of immerse themselves in some like emotional stuff. The music is so good. I keep listening to it. Especially Counter-Attack. Counter-Attack from Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has been just like on loop in my head radio playing for the last like few weeks. Alright, so I guess all the guards have died uh, because we have to like go and defend the whole village. I just died. These are like high level enemies, right? Are they? Yeah, there's a level 15 in here. A mentalist. Not an elementalist, but just a mentalist. Um, which is a mesmer. A golden egg. All right, we've done it. We have defended. Uh, just kind of. Oh, well, I'm gonna collect all this money. 
Uh, just kind of imagine that some of these guards act actually survived, and there's a specific reason for that, and I'll tell you guys uh, later, because it kind of feels weird to have them all die um, with the next step. So we have defended the village, um, and yeah, and you know, they're going like full force. Uh, they don't want to listen at all, right? Uh, this former student of Togo, uh, Togo gave him a chance to, to you know, mend his ways and just leave the island not even mend his ways just leave just give up on this island just go somewhere else um and yeah he didn't want it he didn't want to take it one of the guards survived i love how some of the statues uh all the resurrection shrines uh have a statue of a god or goddess um and some of them are just destroyed this is a statue of duena that's destroyed And let's report to the blade and tell him of our successful defense against the invasion forces of the I gotta sell where is the merchant Masahiko Masahiko Um, I know I should be depositing some of these, but uh, I know for a fact that I'm full on um, bones. Bones, I'm pretty sure I'm full on in my storage. Maybe I'm not now, but I, I think I definitely am. Um, oh, no, I just increased it, actually, didn't I? Yeah, I just increased my... Uh, I actually went out and I bought the storage expansion for materials in guild wars one uh because i felt like it you know i mean it's so it's really interesting in my head because some some might say well you know you you want to support guild wars 2 it's like well i am supporting guild wars 2 by buying stuff in guild wars 1 because it's going to arena net and guess what they're doing with that money they're putting that into guild wars 2 so i'm supporting guild wars 2 by buying stuff in guild wars 1 uh, you have done well. Zumai Village and Xingjie Monastery are safe for now, but Jing uh, Jing Meng must still be taught a lesson about defying the Emperor. Um, all right, so we get a ton, a ton, ton, ton of experience points here. That's like three thousand five hundred. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot of experience points. Um, we need eight thousand to uh, level up again. Uh, Master Togo agrees that the attack on Zumai Village cannot go unanswered. Now that my reinforcements have arrived, I have sent them ahead to to the Panjang Peninsula, ate them, and they will help you eliminate Jing Meng and the pirates within the Crimson Skull Guild Hall. Be warned that Jing Meng and his remaining men are not only powerful, but desperate. They will fight tooth and nail to the last breath. Only the bravest and strongest of heroes should attempt this task. Will you serve? Get 4,000 experience points for this. So this is this is what I was talking about. So uh, this is where it gets crazy. This is where the battle becomes this like it's it's this, uh, they're the powerful enemies. A lot of them, uh, the Crimson Stall Skull have now multiplied like rabbits. I mean, um, as far as I remember, there's like just a ton of them out there now. Uh, when we get to the island, so. Uh, when, we, when we get to the little, um, I meant the little port out there. So they talk about a guild hall. We, we, we will see this happen a few times. Um, there, there's one particular one um, that there's like an actual guild hall that you can go and for a quest. This is all the way out. This is all the way out here. There's up here, there's a little guild hall that you can go. Uh, you have to get across this like bridge to get into it. Um, and uh, it's really cool. It's like, like the idea of invading this this guild that's out in the open world right like that's that's kind of interesting to me so uh anyway so we go and uh we have these guards here so we can kind of collect these guards um as we like approach them i think they will start following us uh, but they're they're most of the time they're going to be fighting so you can kind of see these guys right there they're moving Okay, so you can kind of catch up to them uh, in a minute before they die, perhaps. Uh, or, you know, I, we'd rather... Uh, like I said, I'm going to for this mission. 
see how strong everyone is they're fighting they're they're attacking us and it's uh, pretty bad yeah i was busy today guys i had a busy busy day today i just thought of like how busy I have. i've been like all day so all right so these guys are gonna come with us we have more canton guards here that are hanging out um i don't know if these guys will follow us but i, I think these guys will so these guys that were standing around, guess what? They're coming with us. So we're forming this whole militia um, that will... Um, see, they, they're going to come with us once we defeat this group of enemies. Um, they're really easy to die, but they're uh, they're good for like having extra bodies to uh, kind of power through some of the AoE that we see. Uh, these are also high level. They're level 7, 8. Uh, a lot of them. A, a lot of stuff going on there. Um, so we're now moving on. We're going further with this. Um, yeah, so we're slowly forming this militia force of not really militia, but uh, we have all these people that are coming with us. So uh, luckily, these are enemies to each other, I want to say. The Crimson Skull there. So they're going to be fighting. Uh, I don't know if they're. Are they fighting the Kappa? They are fighting the Kappa. So let's actually help them with this, this task at hand. Go, Birdlock, murder them. And then we're going to have to defeat this group of Crimson. So the, look at the Crimson Skull. They're just, like, flattening those um, those Kappa. Like, they're, the Kappa is no chance at all. But that's okay. We'll just destroy them instead. Oh, bye. Alright, so we move on. Look, there's a, even more. Even more now. Um, this is what I was talking about, like, just imagine the guards being alive, because there's the guard captain here, and I feel like these are, like, the same people that we were, like, fighting with earlier. Um, so it's just kind of weird to think that they're dead or something. Um, but maybe the, maybe it's a different guard captain, I don't know, maybe, because we, they were, t he was talking about the uh, reinforcements have finally arrived from, uh, uh, from Kainang City, and, uh, yeah, so maybe, maybe those are them. Uh, I think they will follow me now. I don't think they're going to run ahead. Yeah, so the guard captain, they're all following us now. So we have this huge army of, uh, of people, but I can't command them and I can't tell them. And they're all just kind of, they're pretty weak. Uh, so we have to be very careful. But I would like to actually, again, defeat Fang because we do get a morale boost for fighting, uh, for killing a boss. So that will help our group out, our few people that we have here. Um, to give us a morale boost. I don't. Does 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 he get the morale? I don't think he gets the morale boost. Um, Ridlock. I don't think Ridlock gets the morale boost. But anyway, so we're moving on here, and uh, so we're gonna have to go all the way down here again across the bridge, and over there is the guild hall of the Crimson Skull. But yeah, like I said, so many enemies around, right? Um, Sue isn't fighting them, which is interesting they're just kind of standing there go, 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 go run. oh and there's more right here oh we actually have a healer we're gonna go deal with him first so if you're careful with the way that you're going going in there or whatever uh, and you kind of take the first few shots because you will need once we once we enter kaimu port kaimu you will need all the bodies you can get because there's just so many uh, i was like where are where are all the guards um because there's just so many enemies that it, it, otherwise you're gonna get crushed and we might not actually make this guys i'm just gonna say we might we might not actually we might die um but i don't i don't know we'll have to see so I love that you can see the dragon statue from over here. It's very nice. Um, how did you guys? Um, so for those of you that are playing that play Guild Wars two, how did you guys um, enjoy the news about the? Um, so we have the inspection thing coming in, and then they also we're talking about like doing more graphics updates on getting like better um, textures on weapons and armors and stuff, and I, which I feel like has improved over the years, anyways nonetheless you know so it's kind of nice to hear that we're gonna get even more graphics improvements 
um, you know, like I said, it, it, it lets it, it kind of gives it a little bit of the, um, you know, reinforces the whole idea of yes, they're still working on Guild Wars 2. They're not, I don't think they're moving on to Guild Wars 3. So look at this, guys. Look at this giant army of enemies that we have before us, okay? Uh, this is crazy, and it's only gonna get crazier from here. So as we enter here, more get summoned. Do you see this? So we already are facing an army of enemies, okay? But then on top of that, we're also faced with... Uh, I'm gonna go for the healer. First and foremost. Uh, so we have our own army that we can send in, but like I said, it is important because we can we can heal ourselves, we can take the bodies. Once they die, one of them just died. Once they die, I cannot revive them. Okay, so once these guys are dead, they're gone. Another one just died. See how fast they're going? Uh, as we like try to make our way through here and we're not even we're not even at Fort Kaimu right now We haven't even made it there yet um, So and we've already lost what like two people in this um, Wild fight um, This is where it gets crazy over there. Okay, so we have one more um, I want to fight the spirit lord because I think he Oops. Oh no, yeah, it, it gets a little crazy here, but um Gridlock is really good for this because he does a lot of AoE damage with a uh, thousand plates, I think is what the what he uses there. Um, so we should be okay. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, the spirit, see the spirit lord is level 15. That's what's scary about this. Like they have these enemies that are like way higher level than me, um, than anyone in our group. And um, I don't know, the guard captain, what level is he? He's level 20. So. He is a little bit more hardy than the rest of them. And this is actually going a lot better. So there's the captain, guys. Oh, but more get summoned. Remember, we're in their territory. Uh, but this is their guild hall. So we're here uh, def defeating them. All right, let's put an end to the Crimson Skull. Oh, boy. Skull healer. Let's get, this. Let's get the other healer. Um, he is, so this is the, he's level 14, um, and like I said, this is kind of, see, and more get summoned, so more enemies are just arriving left and right, um, and yeah, it's really important that you keep as many alive as you can, just to have some bodies to just, I mean, take some of the hits for you, you know, because look, our entire group, dead all dead the only ones alive guess who the only ones alive the npcs that are that are that we're supposed to be helping so um but uh we've already finished we've already done our part uh so i'm not too worried about it because we did we did kill him i don't know where he is but his body's uh, we have finished we have killed him uh i'm not gonna go back for that but yeah i think they're all dead i mean except for uh, ridlock is gonna be Killing the rest of them and uh yeah we've done what we we're supposed to that's all that matters so let's just say we killed all of them and move on with our lives yeah the announcement felt very much like a little damage uh, lim uh damage limitation you know it does sound like there's still community yeah i i the the thing is i and i talked about this recently about the guild wars 3 announcement i i didn't really feel like it was an announcement right i i think a lot of people read way too deep into what was actually said um because as far as i understand it when you actually look at the like i i didn't i didn't personally look at them i don't know exactly what the statements that were made but as far as i understand it if you look into the actual statements they said that ncsoft would be okay if arena net decided to make a guild wars 3 okay there was nothing about like, oh, we're green lighting something that maybe was proposed to us or we're, you know, we're now going into active development. You know, it's it's if it if it, it you know, if it's anything, you know, it, if it's anything, it's just on the table right now. And that's something that maybe they're going to decide to work on if they want to. At this point, they're they're pretty much allowed by NCSoft to work on this um so i i think this goes back to when all of these projects were canceled uh a few years ago where there was rumors that hey there was a guild wars 3 in development and there was at least like two or three big projects that they had uh like a mobile game or something there was like all these you know we, we ended up seeing all the like um the art of it came out and stuff 
where people were saying like, oh yeah, yeah, they, you know, there was like a Guild Wars 3 being worked on, blah, 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 blah. I really feel like that maybe it goes back to that where, and Seasoft is saying like, well, if they want to attempt this again, we will let them, right? Taking pictures of 100 pay stubs. That's always how they want it, right? They want to know all of the, like, it's so, like, anytime anyone wants a pay stub, it's like, uh, I would like your pay stub from 2006, please. And it's like, why? Why do you need to go, why? Why do you need, from the last, like, 20 years, need to know how much money I made? Um, but, yeah, so... I, I think I don't I think a lot of people were reading into it too much. Um, so I think and Seasoft okayed for ArenaNet to sit down and say, let's work on a Guild Wars 3. I don't think that that means ArenaNet is going to take that and say, yes, we're going to do it just because we got the okay. I think they're right now, you know, after everything that, that was Icebreak Saga, after everything that was... Um, the Dragon Saga, right, that all of that, right, we're going into a new way of, you know, no more living world and we're doing smaller expansions and da, da, da. I think they're trying to get a flow into that. I think we're going to see like at least one or two expansions in that sense. And then perhaps at that point, I could see like if everything has settled at that point and we don't have any more fire rings and we don't have anything bad happen, you know, if everything is calm until then in the next like two, three years or whatever, then I could see ArenaNet saying, okay, let's tackle this. Let's, we have kind of figured out our flow. We're doing annual expansions. And we've kind of figured out how we're doing this. So now let's tackle Guild Wars 3. And then we can see a development that, a start of a development into Guild Wars 3. But obviously that's going to take like 10 years to make or whatever, you know, or at least five years to for us to even see any of it really. Um, so I would... I wouldn't be surprised if this was going to be like a five to ten year thing before we we even hear of an announcement of anything guild wars 3 um so i don't know i mean that's that's kind of my thoughts on it uh anyways so uh master togo's former student should not have to fight the emperor of the dragon but at least togo will know that jing meng was given every opportunity to mend his ways you have done the empire great service and the emperor will not forget it and we get four thousand experience points boom all right, so we kind of conclude the side story of having the student of Togo become the leader, uh, you know, former student of Togo become the leader of this uh, enemy faction. Um, but it's going to be interesting because this is not the end of the Crimson Skull um, on the island. Uh, just pretty much on the western side. I feel like there's, like, it's one faction, but they have, like, different, like... Um, like, you know, like two separate, like, home bases, like headquarters or whatever. Because we see one here, uh, but we're going to also deal with a group of them all the way on the other side over here, actually, in Haiju Lagoon. Like, way on the other side of the um, of the island, um, of Xingji Island. So, um, let's see. Uh, the Naga Swords. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So, I think... Uh, I'm gonna go around and see if there's any other side quests we can do on this side. Um, these guys don't have anything over there, I don't think. Um, right, they don't have any, no, no exclamation points. I'm gonna go back to Ranmuzu Gardens, uh, see if anything is going on here. No, 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 nothing, nothing. Uh, no, I think that's it. And then, uh... Jing Jing Monastery. Let's have a look around here. See if there's any side quests. No, I think we've done all of the side quests. So pretty much uh, level level 12 and a half is how far we got in, uh, in that. I'm not going to sell any of this right now. But um, yeah, so now we have kind of finished the story of this side. Uh, we didn't really explore Kin Kinya province. There's uh, some beaches and stuff that we didn't really get to explore, but that's okay. Um, so now let's move on to the other side of the island. <clears throat> and yeah, so we're going back here and then we're going into the road. Uh, what is it? The road less traveled. And uh, hoping to heat, uh, head to the east side of the island, were you? You're not the first ambitious student to seek glory by finding the dangerous creatures there. But even many of those who went there fully prepared never returned. 
Let that be a warning to you. Did you have some questions for me? Uh, I must warn you these inside. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Let me go. Thank you. See? You have to, like, like I said yesterday, you have to talk to them like 75,000 times so it's just like really annoying all right so now we're going down um the the it's like a little side path that leads us to saitang harbor actually um and this is brother paywan Pei i don't know how to say that again but petmaster Raleigh, i've been expecting you many of the instructors have pushed ahead to get a jump on this plague we must hurry to the eastern side of xingji island we may just catch up with the rest of the headmasters and stay one step ahead of this mysterious affliction all right, so we can say, yep, I don't know why Master Togo, what did he say? I didn't, hold on, I want to hear, oh, he won't tell me. I don't know why Master Togo, I don't know what's going on there. But uh, remember him, he is the, uh, he's the monk trainer. So we actually have another monk with us right now. And he actually has an elite skill. So he's actually pretty good help. Um, they do that because our, our friendlies are low level here. Um, so we have like a really good healer with us. Uh, he's going to be using some really good skills to help us out. So uh, we're going to kind of journey down this uh, path, this little side path. Uh, this would be around the area where, like in Guild Wars 2, um, you know, because we're, we're looking right at Saitang Harbor down there. This would be the area where the big statue uh, statues are with the, like, little gate, right? Um, that would be, like, right up here, actually. Like, right, uh, right before this bridge, I want to say, or right after this bridge. Um, somewhere around here would be right where that area is. Um, so the, uh, the the big gate with the with the statues on the side and stuff on the top of the cliffs. This would be right around here somewhere. So. The island definitely has changed a little bit, um, and I, I I do hope that at some point we will get to see the other half, uh, the western half of Xingji Island in like, you know, in, in you know, some kind of expan mini expansion or something. Um, I, I think a Canton themed mini expansion would be really cool. Uh, you know, in a few years, I mean, we just recently were there, right? It was like the last expansion before this one, we were there kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I would love like in two, three um, mini expansions, you know, in two, three years or something. Um, say, oh yeah, we're gonna go back to Cantha now. We're gonna do a little mini expansion there. Would be really cool. Uh, if the new release plan is successful and lucrative, I don't know why they'd uh, scrap it in favor of Guild Wars Three. It's not like Guild Wars Two is the same position as Guild Wars One was, since it was starting to age. Well, that's the thing though. It is starting to age, right? They're having issues. They're they're having to update a lot of the things. The engine. Remember, the engine is a uh, modified Guild Wars 1 engine. So it is a very, very old engine and they're gonna run into limitations. So this is something that I've talked about uh, before a little bit. Um, so I think the one of the big issues that we're dealing with, especially now in Guild Wars 2, is that um, the, the problem is that you have, you know, they have all these new people that they hired, right? These are probably, you know, ArenaNet actually, as far as we know, and I don't know what really how all of that works, but as far as we know, ArenaNet doesn't isn't top of the line when it comes to paying their developers, right? So a lot of the senior developers they try to find other jobs that are like better paying. You know, they've been doing this for a long time, and you know, like any like any of us, you know, we've been doing something for a long time, and we get better at it. We're really good. And we want to get more money because we, you know, we do a better job, right? So, my guess is that a lot of the people that they hired after all of this, you know, after the firings, after all of this happened, were probably younger people, right? Because those are cheaper, um, but they also bring new, fresh ideas in, right? But then you got to imagine those people, whether whether they're whether they're younger or older, they might not know how to deal with this old engine. This old and like you know the the old code that they have the old engine and I think this is one of the one of the things that they one of the problems um, that they perhaps run into is that you know these developers have to deal with this like spaghetti code from like 10 12 years ago right they have to deal with this engine that's like from from the Guild Wars one era like all these things right so I think there is some kind of precedence for. Uh, eventually moving on because I feel like 
uh, just because ArenaNet is not willing to to get a new engine and redo the whole code of Guild Wars 2, uh, which is totally understandable, but then that's going to keep the game back because it's going to be harder for developers to work on it. At least that's kind of my thought. So I feel like there's some kind of precedence to say that in a few years, yeah, maybe we need to drop Guild Wars 2 because it's just becoming so difficult to work on it. Um, and we also need to look at, like, how much can they modify the game to work on newer and newer systems, right? Uh, if you remember back in the day, uh, here it is, Saitang Harbor, meet me inside and I will pass on Master Togo's instructions. So he goes in and uh, yeah, uh, and we're going to do that in a second. I just want to finish this. Um, but yeah, so, you know, is it eventually going to get to the point? Because remember, one of the one of the other reasons why they moved from Guild Wars 1 to Guild Wars 2 was not necessarily that it was um, aging, but it was also they they had all these ideas of things that they wanted to do, right? They wanted to um, they wanted to do all these different things with the engine, and they weren't able to do that. So um, or with the game, they wanted to do all these things. I don't know if it was engine limitation or what it was, but um, they wanted to do all these different things with the game, and they weren't able to do that. So maybe at some point they're gonna run into that those same technical limitations when we're looking at Guild Wars 2, saying that maybe they want to do something with the game that they're not able to do with this old modified Guild Wars 1 engine that at this point, it's actually, it's 19 years old, guys. Like, is it 19? Yeah, it's almost 19 years old because 2005, is 2005, Guild Wars 1 was released. So this engine, you know, is old. It's very, very old. Like when you compare it to like others, to, to, to like newer games and stuff, you know. Yes, Guild Wars 2 still kind of holds up in its graphics. Uh, it does pretty well, I think, overall. It's a beautiful game because they really know how the map designers are really good and in, in really um, creating an atmosphere and really making things look good. But um, I do think that at some point, and I'm not saying right now, and I'm not saying Guild Wars 2 sucks, and I'm not saying Guild Wars 2 needs to be ended right now, and Guild Wars 3 needs to happen, but I do think that at some point we need to be reasonable and think, like, yeah, maybe in, like, five years or so, like, you know, maybe move on, right? Um, and it doesn't mean it has to be for the worse, right? I understand that a lot of people kind of want to hold on to that because they have such a good time with Guild Wars 2, and they've met all these amazing people, and they have such a great time with it. But, um, you know, they can always leave those, they, you know, they're already leaving the servers for Guild Wars 1 there, right? They can do the same for Guild Wars 2, uh, you know, if that's something that's feasible for them. Um, and just kind of keep that game running and then go to Guild Wars 3 and, and do all that new there, you know. Um, um, and, and just kind of, like, keep all of those things alive and you can still go back and play the game. Like... A lot of people were very upset when Guild Wars 2 came out because they left Guild Wars 1 and then they went to Guild Wars 2 and it wasn't the same game. And then they were like, well, everything is ruined now. I'm like, well, you might not get updates for Guild Wars 1 anymore, but you still have a lot of content in Guild Wars 1 and you can still go back and play it. Right. So it's not like we're just completely moving on from it. it's still a game that you can go enjoy now, like even after all these years, which is really, really nice that we can do that. And I hope that we can do the same for Guild Wars 2. So. Um, while I do agree with you, you know, if it works, why, you know, why, why scrap all of it? You know, if this is something, but we also need to look at Guild Wars 2 throughout all of its, like, there, you know, there's been more moments of, it's been a rough development time than it's been a really good development time. Like season three, Path of Fire season four was probably the best time that we had, like in, in those like two, three years that we had there. That was probably the best time, but that's out of 12 years now, right? So there's another nine years where it's just been rocky, right? It's been rocky. It's been constantly changing on what they want to do and all these things that are happening. And, and you know, it's like, oh, we're doing this and we're doing this. Like, we're doing expansion. We're not doing expansion. We're doing dungeons. We're not doing dungeons. We're doing fractals, but we're not doing fractals. We're doing raids, but now we're not doing raids. We're doing strikes instead and da-da-da-da-da, right? And it's just like go going back and forth, back and forth. So maybe a fresh start would be nice as well, you know. Um, I hate to be like the 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 devil's advocate here and just kind of like side completely with doing Guild Wars three, um, because who knows that could completely turn into a shit show as well, and that could be completely like a different game, and people could be like, well, that's not, I don't like this, you know. Who knows? I don't know, but um, you know, we gotta kind of when we look at things, we gotta kind of look at at both, you know, both 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 things there, both. 
uh, sides of the of the of the thing. Um, and we'll see. I don't know. I don't know what they decide, right? We we don't really have a Arena Net is not one of those companies that's going to come out and say, what do you guys think, right? They're going to make their decisions in the background and they're just going to eventually let us know what they have decided on, which is fine, right? They have their share shareholders and NCSoft and, you know, those are the people in charge. We all know how that works nowadays, so. All right, anyways, so we we're here in Saitong Harbor, guys. Looks super different, doesn't it? So, Saitang Harbor, uh, very super underdeveloped. Uh, but we do have this little like area here. I feel like uh, this is the kind of the same uh, little like pavilion area that we get in the um, in 250 years. You know, the, with the little pond in the middle and stuff. This could be like the modified version of that. I'm not sure. Uh, Zendai Jun is over there. There's the gate to go in there. Well, that that actually. Because that doesn't quite align, right? This would be set over there. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that would actually be set like further down here. I don't know how it aligns. I, I don't have the map in front of me. So, uh, but anyways, we're here uh, and let's talk to this guy because he has, remember, he has instructions for us that Master Togo gave him. So uh, he says, if only had Master Amara were master of the monastery, then I would receive the respect I deserve. Now take this so I can go home. Um, he was much friendlier earlier, but apparently now he doesn't, he's not a fan anymore, but we get back to the whole idea. We talked about this yesterday where, um, he mentioned how, um, not, not just him, but there was also other people. I forgot who, but someone mentioned that, oh, actually master Togo himself said that there was some kind of animosity with headmaster Amara. And it's because she thinks that she should be in charge of the monastery. But she, she, you know, she isn't a bitch about it. She's just kind of like, nope, it's fine. I'll be the headmaster of the monks. It's okay, you know, whatever. Um, so, but yeah, so we kind of get a little reiteration of that as well. Oh, Guild Wars 2. And that's the th uh, Guild Wars 1. Yeah, Guild Wars 1, that, that's the thing. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people... You know, they, they thought that because Guild Wars 2 was coming out that they had to abandon Guild Wars 1, right? I, I feel like there was the, like, oh, no, you have to play the second game because now we're moving on from Guild Wars 1. But it's like, you know, and, and I constantly see people that are like, oh, my God, Guild Wars 1 content and I miss it. I have the, such nostalgia for it. And I think people have now realized over the last few years, like, hey, you can go back. You can go back and play it. Like, if you know your login for your account, you can go in and you can make a fresh character and you can re-experience the whole story and you can still play it. You can still invite your friends to go play it. Like, there's nothing stopping people from still enjoying this content uh, where th there's a lot of content in this game, a lot of stuff to do. You know, there's a lot of things that you can uh, just kind of do that you maybe haven't done in a long time and whatever, you know. And I think over the last few years, especially because I've seen... Uh, I'm on the Guild Wars 1 subreddit and um, every day now I see people that are like, oh, I just returned. I used to play this game in high school and blah, 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 or like in college or whatever, right? And they're now coming back to it because they're like, well, the servers are still live and I can still experience this game, um, you know? So I, I, I feel like a lot of people, like when we talk about we're moving, we're moving on from Guild Wars 2 to Guild Wars 3, that doesn't mean they're going to shut down the servers for Guild Wars 2 and you're never going to be able to experience any of that content. All of that content that for, you know, we're still getting more content. So let's say we get another, let's say three expansions, right? Um, you know, you get all of these expansions. I mean, we how many would that be? Because it's the fifth expansion coming out now and then two more. So seven expansions worth of stuff. Living World, you know, they could automate, the, you know, they have already automated the festival. So you have festivals that are still going on. Um, you know, those are still things that could like you know even if we go to guild wars 3 even if we say okay we're done with guild wars 2 develop you know if they say we're done with guild wars 3 um um you know development we're going to move on to uh or with guild wars i keep seeing guild wars 3 guild wars 2 development we can move on to guild we're moving on to guild wars 3 that still means that they could leave some of the servers i mean i'm sure they wouldn't leave all of those servers because it costs money to keep those running but you know they would probably merge a bunch of those servers or whatever and kind of lower the number of servers because a lot of people would be moving on to guild wars 3 but um 
you know, they could still say, we're going to leave these servers running and you can still experience the game like they do with Guild Wars 1, right? And so to me, it's it's not really this whole like, oh my God, no, Guild Wars 2, you can't quit on Like, it's fine. We've we have we've gotten all these years out of it and I can still go back and experience the game. I can still say I'm playing through Guild Wars 1, I'm going, uh, playing through Factions, playing through Nightfall, playing through Eye of the North, playing through, um, you know, the War in Crida and Winds of Change, which are all these amazing Guild Wars 1 things. And I hope I can say the same for Guild Wars 2, you know, as we go on to maybe eventually doing Guild Wars 3. Um, that's my hope, at least. So anyways, so Master Togo has sent Joe, Talents of Wing and Panaku. Remember, so these are all trainers, right? Joe being one of ours, uh, a ranger trainer, Talon Silverwing being a, um, and that bumbling Lo Sha. So there is some animosity between Brother Pawan and Lo Sha. Uh, Lo Sha being the Mesmer, one of the Mesmer trainers. Um, you do meet him if you do the, you know, if you're a Mesmer, of course, you do get instructed by him. Um, uh, so, and Panaku, we talked about him earlier. He was the, he was the predecessor to the Spectre. Elite specialization in Guild Wars 2, remember that, right? He's this, like, um, deadly assassin, and, you know, there, there's a whole quest that you deal with that. Um, but, yeah, so, like I said, the, these guys are going to kind of journey with us and kind of come come along with us to experience the world of factions and Kantha. And, and um, so they, 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 they go from instructors to actually being our, our brothers in arms kind of thing, you know. Uh, uh, to the uh, So he sent those, Master Togo sent them to the monastery in Jaya Bluffs. He believes that the monks there might have some knowledge that will help us to combat the plague more effectively. Honestly, he sent Lo Sha, and yet someone of my obvious skill is relegated to role of messenger boy. In any case, he wants you to meet them and give them any assistance they may acquire. Okay. Um, do you not think, though, that the instance nature of Guild Wars 1 plus the hero system is what makes it replayable? And then we get Guild Wars 2 might not be. I love both games. Um, you, 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 I mean, that's a really good point. I think, I, I think you bring up a really, really good point. Um, and I talked about this recently where I said that, um, or, well, because that's going to lead into something else that I want to say. But um, yeah, you're you're not you're not wrong at all. Like I, I think having uh, the hero system and being able to solo play most of it um, is good. But the only thing that is blocked in that way in Guild Wars Two is any of the instance content there, right? The dungeons, uh, the raids, the fractals, the strikes, uh, that sort of thing, right? So what if um, one of the latest releases for Guild Wars 2, um, and I talked about this recently, uh, or maybe I didn't talk about this. It was definitely a thought that I had recently, and I don't know if I mentioned this to anyone, but um, what if ArenaNet sits down and says, okay, for all of the instance content, we're moving on to Guild Wars 3, but for all the instance contents, we're actually going to let you do uh, form a group of NPCs. Right. Um, like when you look at like other games like Final Fantasy 14, for example, uh, they have for all their lower level dungeons and stuff. They now have uh, this uh, like this. Um, what's it called? The duty support or whatever. Um, and you can you have a group of NPCs that goes in that goes in there with you. Right. What if they give us the ability to have heroes or something in Guild Wars 2? I know that that's completely crazy and that's like, oh, that's not even the game at all. But. What if they say that for instance stuff, when you go into instances, we're going to give you the ability to have NPC groups, right? To kind of let you go in there um, and, you know, maybe have it like uh, for dungeons, for example, they could have uh, for each dungeon, they could have like one specific group of NPCs, maybe that joins you and they all have like specific skills and they're actually not because Guild Wars 2, Guild Wars 2 NPCs are very sucky and they die like immediately, right? Whenever they're like in your group, in your party or whatever, like Destiny's Edge, like they just like uh, they die and they're, you know, whatever, right? But what if, what if we get, what if they actually make them good, right? And you go into like Ascon Catacombs and you have like Gridlock um, and then you have, you know, you find air, um, but they give you like an NPC maybe that's, that's like, um, uh, like, a um, support 
firebrand or something right and and they can heal you while you're in there or whatever right it would kind of even change the way that you play the game um so you know again yeah you can't fully like the thing is the one thing that you can experience in guild wars 2 solo pretty easily now with the way that that um power creep has kind of ruined some of the game i would even say like some of the older maps and stuff some of the older things um you know the story and the overall all the maps and all these things you can easily enjoy those solo right you can easily go through that the only thing that the hurdle would be is like instant content instance content like strikes and um dungeons and raids and stuff like that they could even go okay so let's let's say that we're not doing a party system because that's too much work we don't want to do that. Uh, that kind of create. That kind of doesn't work that way. What if we introduce uh, a story mode for all of these things, right? Uh, you know, we have a story mode for the dungeons, right? Um, but even for like, you know, have a have a have an easy mode, not necessarily story mode, but an easy mode for the story mode where you can solo it, right? Uh, uh, and do that for everything. Do that for every instance. Uh, just kind of lower the damage that enemies do and the health that they have. That's all they really need to do, right? Because, like, the mechanics are still fun and being able to do the mechanics and maybe, you know, lower the mechanics to the point where one person by themselves can do them um, and, and just kind of still have some... Because they have difficult fights. Like, when you look at, like, um, the Balthazar fight, for example, or the fight against Joko, right? These are these are designed to be uh, soloed, right? Um, but they still have cool mechanics in them. You still have to like do certain things. You still have to stand over here and go over here and do this and interact in this way and da 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 da. Right. So they have designed fights that are soloable um, with still interesting mechanics. So they can kind of like maybe, you know, one of the again one of the later latest updates. Before we move on, we want you we want everyone to be able to enjoy all the instance content. And we have now redesigned. Um, all of the fights or you know maybe they can do it as they go along or whatever as they go along with the development of guild wars 3 or whatever and have like a small group of people kind of go through and every so often update the game and and add more and more of these instances that are now soloable right so that way you can solo them or you can decide that hey you know i'm still playing guild wars 2 with my friends we want to do the regular experience. We want to go in and, and experience how you're supposed to get it, right? So that would kind of give you an option there. So, um, right, that's that's kind of the thought that I have there. Um, I, I think the second route with having um, this, you know, having this solo uh, the, or the story mode, the easy mode, right? I think that's probably smarter in that sense that, uh, that's probably going to be a lot smarter to do and probably a lot easier to do. Because like I said, they just need to disable some of the mechanics that happen in, in raids specifically. Uh, some of the strike ones, maybe they need to like disable how those function. Um, and then just lower the health and the damage that they do by like, a, you know, by like 90% or something, right? Because we were talking about like, it's a 10 man strike or raid or something. But we're now instead of 10, we're just one man. So kind of lower it to that point. And, and maybe give, yeah, you know, and maybe give you the ability to like embolden, uh, still do embolden, but do it by yourself. Still have that in there as well or something like that, you know. Uh, so I could see that to, to still have it be relevant in that sense. Um, because mind you, when they started developing Guild Wars 3, or I'm sorry, when they, when they started developing Guild Wars 2, they were still releasing stuff for Guild Wars 2 and, or Guild Wars 1. I'm sorry, my God. It's like all the different Guild Wars, this, Guild Wars, this is, um, but you know, they were still releasing stuff like the War in Kryda and the Winds of Change. Like, all of the stuff was happening after, uh, after Eye of the, or after Eye of the North, which was the, pretty much the, this is our lead up into Guild Wars 2, right? And they were still releasing these things. And there's some significant content, specifically with Winds of Change. Winds of Change had, like, a lot of crazy stuff in it. A lot of really cool stuff. So, um, what if we don't do these, right? We don't make the War in Kryda and the Winds of Change, the, like, how things are changing in these areas of the world, um, but rather uh, we just update the game so you can functionally play it by yourself if you choose to do so, you know? That's that's kind of... That's my 
All right, let's get some new skills. Enough babbling, enough talking. Oh, we don't really have anything. What is this? Yeah, see, I don't... We don't get any new skills yet. Not yet, at least. So we're kind of just um, kind of stuck with what we have, which is fine. No big deal. We'll just... It's not a bad bar for our uh, pet... Pet person? Pet person? <laughs> pet person. All right, so here we are. Um, so there we go. I, I, I remember there being more quartermasters. Um, so we have these, I talked about this yesterday. We have these monastery credits here. And we can actually like see if there's anything interesting uh, that we can buy. Um, there's some bows here that we could get, but we already have a pretty good bow. Um, staves. And more staves. That's it. Well, that's freaking useless um yeah okay anyways we're, i guess we're gonna move on i guess uh i guess these aren't gonna be very useful to me at all but that's fine that's okay uh all right so let's do yeah let's kind of continue the the story here let's kind of move on let's kind of explore the eastern side right we're going to the jaya bluffs uh and we, we want to kind of uh explore now here's the really cool part so uh we still have the same six people but uh, we can actually, our group size has now increased from 4 to 6, which is going to significantly increase our, our like, damage potential and our, like, survivability even. Um, so I think I'm going to take, um, I think I'm going to take Lucas with us as, like, kind of, like, a tanky guy maybe. And maybe we'll take the other ranger with us and we'll have him hang out with us. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Whatever. Doesn't really matter, I don't think, right now. All right, let's move on to the Jaya Bluffs. I do enjoy the Jaya Bluffs very much. Uh, again, I, I really, Saitang, Zai, or um, I'm sorry, um, Xingji Island is one of my favorite places in Guild Wars 1. All right, so here we are. It's, not, it's really, uh, I feel like there's a story here to be told. Because there's this, like, whole town that had, like, an avalanche, kind of, like, or part of maybe Saitang Harbor. Like, these are the, being the outskirts. Uh, you know, entire... But she doesn't say anything. Uh, or maybe... Uh, perhaps you have not heard yet, but all members of the Crimson Skull Guild have been declared outlaws by the Emperor for facts of... Uh, for acts... Facts. For acts of murder, banditry, arson, and sedition against the Emperor. And, it, uh, in fact, there's a bounty for a veteran member so, of the guild, if you bring me... So we haven't completely, we haven't completely destroyed the Crimson Skull. Uh, the remainder of the P of the Crimson Skull are now outright like they're just ha being hunted down. Okay, after what they tried to do, after they tried to take over Zumai Village, the Emperor was like, uh, "I'm declaring them the like blacklisted to every place, and we don't want them anywhere around, and we have to kill them all." Um, and yeah, so here we are. So we're gonna deal with Yetin. Yetin? You, wow, Yetin, really. Yeti? I was thinking of Etin in my head, so that's where Yetin came from. I don't know why I was thinking of Etin. Because we usually see Etin in the mountains in Guild Wars. Um, so I was just like, Etin. But I was reading Yetin, so I was like, yeah, or Yeti. And I was like, Yetin. Uh, <laughs> I'm an idiot, so that's fine. Um, I always love that little part right there. We're going to look at that again. It's something that I pointed out before End of Dragons came out. Um, and it's, it's something that, uh, in the video, in, in the video where I reviewed Shinji Island before, uh, End of Dragons came out, again, such a cool series, uh, not that, you know, not that I'm, like, tooting my own horn or whatever, but it was super fun to go back and, like, visit these places and, and really kind of, um, look at these, uh, you know, look at all these things. There's Mickey Lake. Uh, you know, look at all these different areas and stuff that we have in the game. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna go up here. We're gonna, we'll, we'll join these, uh, guys at the monastery. So there's another, we have our own monastery here, uh, but they have another monastery out here. And, uh, so we're, we're gonna go over there in a second and we're gonna, uh, see if those monks from that monastery cannot, can, can help us in fighting this, um, this, this plague that's going on so i want to go to this is like the highest point in the mountains i think that's something that they point out or maybe over there it is or something um but i always love to go up here because you see this like little village down there right 
um and it's really cool to me i, I really love this little uh this little village that's that's out here uh with a little harbor you don't get to go there right you you don't get to go over there and in fact uh, and it was something that before end of dragons came out i was always like oh man i can't wait like if we're going back to Xingji island like maybe i'll be able to go to this to this town you know maybe there's going to be a town there uh still 250 years later and i'll be able to like hang out and um you know learn about you know the people that live there in the gilders one times right uh because it's not only um it's not only that uh I th i'm thinking of a different area um because there's also like and we're gonna look at that as well there, there's like an area later on where you can look at like the side of the mountain and you see just like these these the, this farm it's like off on the side of the mountain and you're just like Man, you know, I wonder, like, they create this, like, world, and you're like, I wonder who lives there. You know, I wonder who this person is that lives there, that does this. Um, and we get this little, like, ravine here. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then we have this. This was another thing that was, like, kind of cool. So we have this path that leads away from the village, and that leads inside of the mountain. Um, and that was something that's really crazy, right? And we actually do get to enter in a weird way we do get to enter into this mountain because remember in guild wars 2 so you, you don't have the what what's here in guild wars 2 right at this town what's actually there is the little uh the little hatchery for this for the sea turtles okay the little circular hatchery that's what in the what's in this exact location in guild wars 2 um so if you go south of that and and you and you think about what's along the mountain there there's actually the the little um hideout that the um aether blades have in the side of the mountain it's in in the about same location as the this is not the exact same entrance because obviously it's on the like on on this side of the mountain is where the entrance is so it would probably be more like over here or something like underneath right where we are or maybe even on the other side over here it would be more on that side or something um, but it, it could be that this is connected to that or something that there's some kind of cave system underneath that kind of connects to some of that but it's kind of crazy to think like you know they, they built this and it's like or the, you know they made that and it's like it's never meant to be explored but it kind of I'm like well we could, you know it would be cool to have a dungeon in there or something you know? I still think that arena missed out on not doing open world dungeons uh, in Guild Wars 2, or not open world dungeons, but like continuing having these regular dungeons that they have. I think there's uh, precedence for this for sure. Feathered Crests. So this is a farm that I used to do. Um, uh, I, probably some people go out and still do this. Um, you can actually, so all these Sensali, they drop, uh, they drop feathers as well as feathered uh, crests and you can break those down you can actually take uh, like a salvaging kit we can do that right now and you can get feathers out of them and feathers for longest time for the longest time i don't know how the economy is now on them but they used to sell for a crap ton of money because i think one of the elite armors needs feathers so it's actually one of the like sought after items uh, because of that um so you could go out and you could like solo farm all of these sensali and i used to do it on my assassin actually i remember this um and i would go out and you just um be, the reason being um why you like someone would say well why do you go out solo why don't you take the group of people with you like it's, it's so much easier to do in a group well the problem is that all the loot that drops for from enemies is always divided amongst the group so while we don't see it but there is items that are dropping for the the group members that I have, right? We don't see them because they're obviously NPCs and I don't need it. But pretty much the loot table, the, the chance of me getting loot is is actually getting divided by six right now. Because I have six people in my group and they um uh, they, they are getting a share of those things as well. So uh, that's why you want to go out by yourself because then your drop rate increases because everything that drops, drops for just you. You know, so there's been many... Oh, there's an Oni, guys. Look. Hello, Mr. Oni. Ooh. Appeared out of nowhere. Let's kill him. I just want to talk to the collector after. I don't think we're going to see Oni, but here we are. 
And there's more more come more come the collector. Let's see what he has. Um, he says, "I am so relieved. I haven't talked to any of the collectors because remember in Guild Wars one they don't say anything. They just look for things. In Guild Wars two or in in and prophecies. I'm sorry. In prophecies they don't say anything. They just kind of are like, hey, yeah, uh, you know, we want this, right? But in 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 factions they actually started having dialogue where they actually tell you some stuff. So. Um, and I, I, I'm, unfortunately, I didn't talk to any of the traders that were around here, um, but it, I don't think that's a huge deal. Um, so the, this guy says, I'm relieved to see you. My trade caravan was traveling through these mountains on our way to Xingji Monastery. When we were attacked by Yeti, they carried off all of our supplies and there's no way we can make it to the monastery without them. Please, if you can bring me three stolen supplies, I will give you this in return. It's kind of weird because it's like, where's your caravan? You're by yourself. Like, where are they? A caravan of one isn't really a caravan, is it? <clears throat> Sorry, I've been talking to everyone once so you're off. Uh, I'm gonna go another hour. I'm gonna go to like 1 a.m. 1 a.m. my time, at least. Uh, just so you guys know. I I'd like to inform you guys on when I leave. I, I, I sometimes find that... Uh, I, I don't know how other people feel. I kind of feel kind of weird when, when I watch another streamer. And they like decide like... You know, on a, on a whim... Right, they're just like streaming and then on a whim they're like, Alright guys, I'm gonna head out now. And it's just like, whoa, okay. I'm like, man, I, you know, I, I feel like I need to mentally prepare myself that I'm not hanging out with this person anymore. I don't know, it's kind of weird to me. So. <laughs> so how close are we to the crab? Not at all, okay? So just to kind of, <laughs> like I said, it comes very late in the game. So what we have to do here in Jaya Bluff, um, or, uh, on this side of the island, we have to... Um, talk to them. We're gonna be journeying around. We're gonna we're gonna journey around the island. We're gonna go to Haiju Lagoon uh, through the mountain cave here. We're gonna go to Haiju Lagoon. Then we're gonna make our way uh, south to Zendai Jun um, and travel through Zendai Jun. And then we're gonna leave to go to uh, Kainang City. Uh, we're gonna come to Kainang Center. We're gonna journey around. We're gonna meet up actually with um, the Guild Wars uh, the Guild Wars Prophecies people. Uh, they're gonna actually come in and they're gonna um they're gonna help us we're gonna join for forces with them against this plague and then we're gonna eventually decide to go and uh ask the luxon uh, the luxons and the kurziks for help and that is when we get the ability to do that so it's probably not gonna happen today i don't think so i don't think i can get there in one hour not at the speed that we're going at anyway so um, sorry, but we're gonna get there at some point. We'll get the crab. Oh, there it is. There's the little see So I was talking about this little far. So obviously here's our our little companions are out here But um, but yeah, I kind of like I look at that right and I, I look at like um, I, I look at these little like this little farm over here. And it's just like man, you know It's kind of cute like I love this little farm up on the hill and it's like, you know They're so isolated like that they get you know that the plague reached them this far out because they're like way up by themselves on this cliff and like even the house over there is just like what's going on there like you know i feel like there's like a story to be told or something you know just curious yeah <laughs> yeah it's 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 a it's a long ride that's why when i looked at it i was like man really and let me double check and make sure that that's the first that we can because that is really laid in the like in the factions campaign Lurker is what they're called. Yeah, that's. Oh, wait a minute. It might be a little bit earlier. Oh, it's actually earlier. We can get it. Um. Oh, I can get it a little bit earlier. So we don't. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit earlier than I said. So we're still gonna be traveling to the city. Um, and then when we're when we're when we're in the city, there's actually a chance for us to get it. Um. Yeah, so this is like okay, this is not super far, so there is there is gonna be uh it's a little Yeah, they look really cute. Their little eyes. Um so we will actually get to see it a little bit sooner. Good thing that I double checked that. So like that. I have lost some frames once again tonight. I'm sorry guys. Um I think that's 
I think it's every time I go on like a website or something and it loads that up. All right. Anyways, so here's Lo Sha. He says, "Ah, oh, there you are. We were uh, we were told to expect you, and I was quite relieved. Truth to be told, this is the guy that uh uh Pei Wen Pei uh, Pei Wan or whatever. Uh, he doesn't like him or whatever. Um, uh, but yeah. So this is Lo Sha, and he says, "We were told to expect you." Talon, where are you going? Can I? Oh my God. Do they need to survive this? Uh, I'm gonna just have him go by himself. He's gonna die, guys. Just so you know. I wanna read this. Um, I love... Oh. Oh, he had to signal. Oh, I love it. The pathing was that he had to signal us to... To come over here. So anyways. Um, there you are. We were told to expect you and I was quite relieved, truth to be told. We have all heard, heard tales of your exploits thus far. And we're mightily... And then Panaku, remember Panaku is this guy over here. He's the assassin guy, right? Um, he's he's very like short. He's very to the point. He's very you know he's an assassin. He doesn't you know he's a typical assassin guy. Still wagging your tongue, Losha, or shall I, uh, still your wagging tongue, Losha, or shall I make it still? So he's like this very brutal, very you know because we we talk about like. The spe the specters in Guild Wars 2 are based off of, like, Panaku changing his ways, right? So he's a very dark, he's a very just, like, to the point, uh, murderous, like, assassin type of guy. And he literally is just, like, um, pretty much telling Losha to shut the F up, right? And it's just like, whoa, okay. Um, so Joe says... Enough, both of you. Petmaster Raleigh, the situation is serious. Afflicted creatures have overrun the monastery. I fear we have arrived too late to save the monks within, but we must try. We will follow Talon's lead and charge when we, uh, when and where he tells us. Panaku, this means you. Talon, we await your orders. So Talon, being a Tengu, is in charge of all these humans. Very interesting, right? But he's also the warrior, right? Always The warrior is always depicted as the leader of the group, right? And so is he, right? Because we have a warrior we have a mesmer we have a an assassin and we have a uh we have a ranger here with us right so he's kind of the leader uh and panaku says i will kill when it is time to kill and talon says it is my hope that we will take them by surprise follow me and when i give the order strike quickly him running across the running across the bridge was actually the uh signal that we were supposed to attack but this is siju hall now, remember, this is actually accessible in Guild Wars 2, uh, and this is the little library that you can get into or whatever. You can go, you can take the teleporter inside of it, um, and this is it. This is like the same circular uh, structure that has a bridge that connects to it. But yeah, 250 years ago, this was a monastery. Uh, so it's still a place of learning. I think they na I think now it's a library in Guild Wars 2, right? I think that's what they use it for or something. I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what they use it for. But um, it looks a little bit different. It's been modified in 250 years. Of course, there's been a lot of technological advances that have been made. But still kind of the same idea that there's two bridges that are connecting to this circular island um, way up in, t in the sky. Um, you know, we, we uh, it's really cool because in Guild Wars 2, we get to go down and actually take our skiff, right? And and our mounds, and, and we actually get to go down to this beach down here. Um, I That was another thing, like this little, um, this little lighthouse down here. Like, I was like, oh man, are we going to see this little lighthouse? But we don't, actually. This is just a beach. This is where Aether Blades are hanging out on the beach in Guild Wars 2. Um, and we don't, oh, we got a purple dye. Um, and we don't actually get to see it. Hey, Jacob, welcome. Welcome, welcome. So, yeah, so here we are hanging out. So, unfortunately, we didn't make it in time, and these monks have all been sickened, uh, and we have now killed them all. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So. Uh, we take a look at the Jaya Bluffs. There's some other areas. I think there's some, uh, I think there's some, um, Yeti over there. Over there, over there whatever. All right. So let's talk to Joe and see what she has to say. Uh, wait. Oh, I'm being body blocked. Uh, although you're still learning, it is clear that Master Togo places a great deal of faith in you. I'm beginning to understand why. Okay. Master Togo sends Sue, Sister Tai, 
Kai Ying and Professor Guy to Haiju Lagoon. We have not met from Professor Guy, but he's the ritualist, uh, one of the ritualist trainers. Um, so Sue, we we met her. She's the necromancer trainer. Sister Tai, we met her as well. We we did we actually got a quest from her, um, and uh, she is the um, uh, monk trainer. Kai Ying, we actually met him as well. He was out in Kaitan Village, right? He was that guy out there, and he's the elementalist trainer. So um, we actually get to meet them. We're seeing Ascalon expansion time, or at least Charholnius Grossmore Valley uh, expansion time. Anything uh, at this point is good. Um, well, I just put out a video. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, a couple a couple hours ago, uh, I put out a video. Uh, and I actually have to... I, I think I'm leading to disagree. I don't think it's going to be pre-searing Ascalon. I don't think it's going to be anything Ascalon. Um, I don't think it's... I, I think it's going to be more Woodland Cascades. Um, but I could be wrong. Maybe it is. I, I mean, I put the video and I kind of had both thoughts, you know, whatever. But I'm leaning more towards the Woodland Cascades for various reasons. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Who, who knows? I'm, I'm not sure. But yeah, we'll have to see. Maybe, um, uh, maybe we're going there because the cryptos are invading, um, invading that area. And we have to go save them. And that's the next expansion. Is, uh, you know, Epark gets defeated and now someone, like, Paytha actually turns out to be a bad guy and she flees to this location. And we have to defeat her. <laughs> Still dealing with cryptos, so there it is. Uh, anyways, so uh, Master Togo has sent Sue, Sister Tai, Kai Ying, and Professor Guy to Haiju Lagoon to check on the status of Linkai Township. He asks that you join them when you're finished here. Aside from Sue, they're not well. They're not the hardiest group, and will need some help. Um, Lucas over here is dancing. Uh, um, so meaning this is not the hardiest group. Because these these are all spellcasters, right? So here in in this group we have a ranger, right? So we have a ranged like bow wielding person. We have Talon who is you know super hardy. Panaku who's like this murderous killer, right? Um, and and Losha being a mesmer. But we're kind of dealing. So Sue, yes, she is an outlier. She's very powerful. She's a necromancer. She do, she commands the dead. But then we have Sister Tai who's a monk, so she's a healer. Kai Ying is an elementalist, which is pretty squishy. And Professor Guy summons spirit. So they're not the most hardy of, you know, they're all spellcasters. So they're not the hardiest of, of people. Um, yeah, I read somewhere next uh, patch isn't closing Crypto's story. Oh, really? Where did you read that? I did not read that. Where, where I, I would like to know about that. Uh, we have more attribute points, guys. Um, yeah, just kind of, you know. All right, anyways. Have a safe journey, my friend. Yeah? You think that was a great idea to do? Yeah. Uh-huh. My cat just knocked something down? Uh, what did you knock down? Yeah, crazy lady. All right. Uh, okay, so we're moving on. We're journeying. Um, so now we have to go to Haiju Lagoon. Remember, we do have the other quest where the Naga have been pushing further into the island. And we have to go uh, and check in with Scout Shen Fei. Uh, to see what the heck is going on with the Naga and why they're coming over here to the water source and what's going on there, right? So uh, there's some kind of weird, interesting story in the back happening there as well. Um, so, yeah. We shall see about that. So we're going to journey across. I love the little dragons up here. I hate that they removed a lot of the dragons in Guild Wars 2 um, that are just like hanging about. Or whatever so um there's a quest we can take up oh maybe we should do this maybe we should do this quest um so we have gull hookbeak and yort strong jaw so we have a we have um a, a tengu and a, a yeti right and this guy you can't see it but inside of this belly is a um they're, they're he has a quest but he's an enemy it's kind of weird right but they both have, he has an exclamation point inside of his belly. It doesn't, it's kind of weird because it's just like right there where his body is. It's not above his head. Um, but yeah, so they, they both have a quest, or they both have a quest for us. But they're both enemies. So what's going to happen if we go in there? Uh, we actually get to choose who you want to side with. The Tengu or the Yeti. I think I'm going to side with the Tengu. Just because we like the Tengu, right? We, we like, uh, um... The, yeah, we, we like talents over wings, so 
I'm gonna actually like try to kill the the uh, it's a level 15, but I'm gonna try to kill the Yeti here and See he kind of he moved and you can kind of see the exclamation point. All right, so this enables us to talk to Gull Hookbeak, okay? So whichever one you kill, the other one becomes friendly and you can talk to them and you get a quest from them. So I usually always do the the Yeti quest, but I, I, I don't think I've, I've done this for a long time. So human interloper, you know not what you have done. No doubt you foolishly believe you have aided me. But you have in fact deprived me of the chance to complete the rite of valor and prove myself. If you cannot find another worthy foe for my blade, you shall have to suffice. I will find a worthy foe. So we have taken, apparently they have this ritual that they have to undertake um, this rite of valor. And we interrupted it by going in and saying, hey, break it up you two. And shooting one of them and killing him. And uh, yeah, so... So we interrupted something very important. Ripsy. Um, so yeah, so we have to find another worthy target. Um, right there. So we have a target right there. Um, and he actually joins us. So the idea is locate um, locate a powerful Yeti that Go Hookby can kill to complete the Rite of Valor. So I think I don't know if we have to kill him or if he has to kill him or what. I'm going to take care of these yetis that are around. Um, specifically, I, I want to say the long hair is the healer, right? The white ones, I think, are the healer ones. Uh, oh, I need to talk to him. Oh, he says to him. Uh, Yerg Snarktooth. Yes, my tribes made know him well. I couldn't read all of that. I don't know what it says. So I guess you have to enable, you have to talk to him before you go and kill. Um, just so that he can get the, uh, victory. Is that okay for you? Where are you going? You have atoned for your mistake, but do not think this makes. Can you stop walking around, please? Just stay somewhere. Uh, makes his allies of it. I'm guess I'm gonna have to read really fast. Uh, if if I see you again, only uh, only one of us will walk away from the encounter, and it will. Uh, it, and it will not be you or something like that. All right, let me finish this quest. First. This is annoying as hell. And it will not be you. Yep. So we did that. Um, yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what he was saying about the snack to this guy, but I don't know why he's facing very important. So we get the little side quest we get to do there. Um, I, I love how he like is part of our group and then he leaves it. Wait a minute. Didn't he just leave it a second ago? Yeah. See. And he gets back in. I don't know. There's some kind of bug going on. Interesting. So I'm gonna go until one one a.m. Just so you guys know. Uh, yeah. As I was saying earlier. So uh, it's kind of weird that you know I always hate when 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 um, when uh, streamers do that. They just kind of like after a set amount of time, they're just like, "All right, guys, I'm leaving. Bye." And I'm like, oh, oh my god, no, I, I didn't think you were going to leave. What am I doing with my life now? I was so committed to watching you, and then now you're gone, and, and you don't even care about me. Uh, I don't know. It's obviously, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but it's it's kind of, does anyone else get that get that feeling? Where it's just kind of, so I like to announce when I'm leaving, so people can prepare themselves. Maybe, maybe, maybe they do that because then people are like, oh, well, he's leaving in 15 minutes anyway, so I might as well go now, right? They want to get, as they want to get viewers until the very end. You know, I, I would love for everyone to stay until the very end, but, um, you know, if people decide to leave sooner, that's okay with me as well, I don't know. Um, I, I still try to do stuff. I still try to make important content, um, you know, as I as I play till the very end. You know? Let's talk to this guy, Groot Snowfoot. 
Groot Snowfoot to hate Tengu. Tengu kill friends. Make Groot mad. You kill Tengu. Bring Groot three feathered crests. We have uh, only one, and we could get a new armor, but that's, <laughs> that's okay. So we have a somewhat friendly uh, Yeti here that wants all of the Tengu dead. Stop making a butthole. It's gross. <laughs> what are you doing? This is some weird stuff. I can't zoom in weird stuff here now. Right now. So weird. Alright, anyways. Uh, yeah, so here we are. Here's like a, 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 a Yeti cave. Um, the Kanai Caverns. It's weird because we were told that they were called something else. Remember how this is the Kanai, uh, th that the, um, the, the, the sister, the sister in Zumai Village actually told us that they were called, like, Zunka Caverns or something like that? Um, I thought that's, th that this was this, because she talks about how you have to cross from the Jaya Bluffs through these caverns to Hyjal Lagoon, and I think she called them, like, Z Zoom Zunka Caverns or something like that? That's what she called them? Uh, it's kind of weird, but that's not at all... Um, but I would like to go out here because there's always, you know, I, I've been looking at all the different areas and stuff, so we're gonna be looking at this little area out here as well. Is it right here? I think it's right here. No, it's not. I went to the. I went, I went we're just back to Zhu Zhu Yun point. Uh, I want to go. I want to go down. I want to go down there. Down there, way back there. I forgot that I don't have to press the button. Mm, draw on the map. <clears throat> yeah, this is the, that's where I want to go over there. All right, so we're almost at a new area, guys. Haiju Lagoon. It is an area that is accessible in Guild Wars 2. It looks very different. Um, and in Guild Wars 2, it doesn't really have that much of a meaning. In Guild Wars 1, we're actually going to see a little bit more of a... Like, they're, they're, they're putting a little bit more of an importance of what this area really does uh, for Shinji Island and, um, you know, that, that type of stuff. There's a little bit more of that going on, so... Kill them! Kill them all! So we're now equal on level with our group, by the way. Um, they were higher level than us, but we are level 13 now. So. Um, yeah, we get this little, we get this little, like, I always love this. It's like a little panorama of like, hey, we can go out and, and see, you know, get this view. Um, yeah, there's another little town out here that we don't ever get to see, right? And if we, if, if we look at it, right, it's down here and it connects to the beach to that other town that we've been looking at, right? But it's just kind of weird because, um, you see some of these animals and they're kind of like moving around. I don't know what those are, sheep or something. Um, and, and yeah, we, we don't know what's going on. I always love looking at that little town. It looks very different, like all fucking Kanta. Looks very different. Well, I mean, it is 250 years later. Like, you know, compare, compare the United States, uh, to, you know, now, for, you know, now to what it was 250 years ago right 250 years is a very long time for you know while civilization is actively happening for things to change so i'm not surprised that it looks different you know i mean a lot of things can happen the environment changes because the earth is constantly moving and you know natural disasters can can change the the face of whatever right so um there there is you know a pretty good you know explanation there for for these things so um so we have a collector here greetings stranger it is not a glorious date uh, is it not a glorious day today hey perhaps you can help me with something i made a wager with a few friends of mine about who could win the most impressive shell who could find the most impressive shell i had her uh, i have heard that kappa shells grow more and more colorful as they age so if i can find some elder kappa i am sure if you if i can find some elder kappa i'm sure to find a shell to win this bet if you want to help, bring me three Elder Kappa shells. Okay. Alright, so here we are. This is Haiju Lagoon. 
Ooh. Oh, and we have afflicted, guys. Immediately, we get assaulted by afflicted. So clearly, as, uh, you know, Master Togo was saying this, that they're coming from the east side. So, and we're, we're now making our way, you know, past the mountains. There wasn't a lot going on in the mountains, but it's also because um, there's a lot of Tengu and a lot of Yeti that are fighting, right? So they, they would be themselves fighting any out any any forces coming in right so um that would make sense right so remember scout uh shen fei he's the one that deals with the uh that we were supposed to talk to uh because of the water source right they uh he's a scout so i thought he might be interested and he was um he's trying to figure out or he might have an idea where they're coming from okay so let's talk to him i have tracked the naga all around the lagoon I swear sometimes they almost seem to appear out of thin air. And they do do that. Uh, they do jump out of the water at you and stuff like that. And I said, oh, so you're the one. Uh, <clears throat> so you're the one m my friend Jing Hu speaks so, uh, of so highly. You impressed him, you know. Not an easy task, that. I'm sure he told you that I've been trying to locate where the Naga are coming from. But truth is, I haven't gotten too far. I tracked them down to the beach north of here. But then I noticed something that has left me stumped. They seem to swarm there, then suddenly disappear. I and I have uh, I have never seen them south of the lake. Strange, I know, but maybe you can check it out. All right, so um, yeah, so it's very interesting uh, they that that this is going on, but um, we're gonna be we're gonna be looking at uh, actually doing the other quest first. So I kind of wanted to just do this because uh, we 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 still have to kind of help. Uh, Linkai Township is right around here, and uh, Linkai Township is uh, where our friends are waiting, and they need help to fight against the afflicted. So we we need to we need to that takes priority, right, over um, going to figure out what the Naga are up to, because they're not they're not an immediate threat. Yes, the Naga are threatening in that sense, but um, they're not the immediate issue here. Uh, but the afflicted that are all look they're everywhere so uh we have to journey to linkai so uh linkai is interesting as a town because uh as you guys saw so there was another little outpost down here you guys kind of saw the buildings um combined combined with that um it becomes this i forgot what they call the the, the area of of gilbert Sioux. so when you leave saitang harbor um, and you go, you go north, actually, like, um, like, you, you go to an area, like, the, the, the what is, what is the place called, where, like, June's mansion is and stuff, that little, um, that, that little town or whatever, it actually grows, and Linkai Township and this town that we were just looking at actually combine to make, um, to make one big town. Um, over the over the many over the 250 years that um, let's grab that they're super high level as you guys saw I just died again um, yeah so and we have these falls here very pretty we go and this is Linkai Township Linkai Township is really cute there's this cute little town um, yeah and our friends are right over there. And there's a miller, we're going to be talking to him as well. But yeah, so we want to kind of check that out. <clears throat> Alright, Professor Guy says, The cavalry arrives at the most opportune uh, at a most opportune moment. Although I had anticipated rather more, how should I put it, impressive cavalry? Sister uh, Tai says, I'm certain Master Togo knew what he was doing when he sent Petmaster Raleigh, Professor uh, remember, we must remain calm even in the face of the most daunting enemy. Sue says, remain calm. Little sister, we have afflicted coming at us from all sides. At least there will be no shortage of corpses. And Kai Ying says, things may look dire, Petmaster Raleigh, but take take heart. Perhaps we will live on as part of uh, Sue's minions. Um, yeah, and, we, and here they are. The sickened are coming. The afflicted are coming, uh, attacking this little township. It's really cute, this little township. Um, there's just like this farmy area over here. Um, look, we have a big group. These are only level 10. So we have already surpassed some of these people in terms of strength, right? Um, cause we're students at the monastery. 
And these are all like these are all our instructors, right? Sister Tai instructed us on on the monk ways and stuff like that. So uh, that we're that we're stronger now than then really shows that we have this like, you know, we're we're truly the the we have the makings of a hero kind of thing. Oh, and look at that. We have the Afflicted Senku. Um, that's like our first boss. Our first... Wow, look at that. He like destroyed me. This is our first named... Uh, afflicted enemy. Um, beside... What? Like the Minister or whatever? So this is like a powerful Afflicted... Um, who's dead over there? Oh, my pet is dead. Like, who's dead over there? Um, I should just leave the wiki open on this one. Okay, so uh, they say, we made it. Life is full of surprises, eh, Professor? Because he was so, um, you know, he was so negative about it or whatever. Uh, and Professor Guy says, indubitably. Uh, and Sue says, hey, Pedmaster Riley, come over here. I need to talk to you. All right, so let's talk to her. Thank you for the help, Pedmaster Riley. You have come far since you, uh, your arrival at the monastery. Now we have more business we must attend to. Okay. Uh, just before the plague creatures began their attack, Master Togo sent word that we were to meet him at the gates of Zendai Jun. He asked uh, that you accompany us. Zendai Jun is just south of here. When you're ready to, uh, when you're ready, lead the way and we'll follow. So they're actually going to be part of our uh, group, and that's why I wanted to do this first because we actually get to have a big group of people with us, and that makes us safer and stronger and better and whatever, right? So um, look at this. We can overlook this beautiful area we have some dragon lilies here those are really cool uh yeah and we're gonna look into uh doing some side quests here uh we want to do the naga quest and we want to you know that's kind of we're, we're kind of concerned with this right now so we want to we want to um while we're passing through uh we want to kind of do some side quests and stuff so um, I'm gonna talk to her in a second. Uh, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go, I, I'm gonna talk to all of these people in a second. So this is a pretty big town, right? And like I said, so Linkai Township is over here, and then this is this town. In Guild Wars 2, they combine to make one mega city, kind of. Like a really big city, and then, and then June's Mansion is like at the top of this hill. It sits, it sits like right at the top of this hill, you know, and then they build the wall, which goes like, you know right right along here like this wall i i think this might even align pretty well so they expand this wall make it larger they build it up or whatever um yeah and and that's going on so uh we have this guy here ba song okay so we're gonna go and he's talking to children he says listen closely the younglings for i tell you uh for for i tell you now the tale of the great and fearsome bog beast of baku this one is very scary he says this one kid Fear not, little one, for the bog beast of Baku only has an appetite for bad apples. Surely all children here honor their parents and behave as they should, do they not? Yes, yes, I'm always good. Uh, I am more gooder than she is, I swear. I'm the most goodest of all. It's true, not like him. He still, he still wets his bed. Yes, my little hatchlings, I'm sure you're all very good, but for those of you who are not, a special place is reserved for you in the belly of the bog beast. The great bog beast's lair is deep in the heart of the hidden cave at the bottom of Haiju Lagoon. There, in the murky depth, it sits, never batting an eye, always listening to the voices of insolent children. When a child misbehaves, the bog beast emerges from the eternal darkness of its home and creeps out into the night. When it finds the home of a naughty child, it waits patiently outside the window, quietly listening for the child to drift off to slumber. And this kid says, "Eep!" With the last candle extinguished and the house enveloped in darkness, the bog beast quietly forces the shutters open, slips inside, and steals the child, careful to muffle the screams with its sickly appendages. 
Uh, what becomes of these children? No one knows for sure. Some say they're taken into the depths of the lagoon with the bog beast, where it eats them whole. Aye. Where it eats them whole. Others say the bog beast keeps them alive and torments them every night, forcing them to cry out in terror so that all the children might know what will become of them if they misbehave or something. On days such as these, they can say the uh, uh, you can still hear the children going, be uh, crying out, be good, be good. I never heard the children at, uh, cry at night. You made that up. What what is that? Is that the sound of a rotten apple in this bunch? Perhaps the bog beast will feast tonight. Uh, I didn't see any, say anything. He did. Let let him get eaten. I don't want to get eaten. I do not taste good. Why do you not taste good? Because you made in your pans? Quiet, children, and fear not. Surely there's a hero about who will face the bog beast of Baku and keep you from harm? So... <clears throat> We've heard of the Bog Beast of Baku, and I'm trying to remember who the NPC was that told us about that. Um... Okay, so we actually, so Headmaster Vang, remember him? He was the arrogant guy. He was the elementalist trainer that we talked to. Sorry, I had to just look this up because I, I don't remember what it was. But uh, when we learned, when we, when we first started, um, well, when we first started out, we got to know all the headmasters of all the different professions. And there was Headmaster Vang. He was the elementalist headmaster. And he told us that he has killed, he killed the bog beast of Baku. Right? And we're like, ooh, and he's like, oh yeah, I'm such an accomplished guy. And we're like, we don't even know what that means. So that has no like meaning to us, whatever, right? Um, but then, so this guy over here tells the story of the Bog Beast of Baku, talking that, saying that um, it's out to get children. You know, it's like this, this you know, tales for, fairy tale for children to make them behave, right? It's like, oh, if you don't behave, it's going to come and get you, right? Um, so... But then he gets a quest for us. So we talked to him. And he said, The tale I tell is true, stranger, despite my wishes it were not. There is a bog beast of Baku indeed. Many have slain the creature, but time and again it arises from the grave to claim the bad children once more. I ask of you, find this creature near its home in Haiju Lagoon and slay it in hopes that this time it will not return. One final word of warning, the bog beast is powerful beyond belief and should only be hunted by the bravest and strongest of heroes. I will slay this bog beast of, uh, of a Baku for the children. See, children, you have nothing to fear. This hero before you has taken the challenge to face and defeat the bog beast of Baku. Oh, you're so brave. Anyone else say anything? Don't let it eat you. Let it eat you. So he has like a weird way of talking. I want to be just like you when I grow up. I want to be a hero too. Um, so they're going to be talking about this. So, uh, time and again, it's risen. Um, so it's one of, it's like this weird spirit of the lagoon that keeps rising and keeps, you know, attacking children or attacking, you know, travelers or whatever. Right. Um, and I, you know, and I think it's such a missed opportunity by arena net. Uh, it's very unfortunate because I really, really hope that once we go back to Haiju lagoon, that we would see the bog beast of Baku, whether it's a hero challenge um uh you know or a strike mission even um or um you know i didn't know if they're gonna bring back like that would have been a really good um like a bounty that would have been a really good bounty to have right the bog beast of baku like if they had brought back um for end of dragons like uh, uh brought back bounties you know that would have been a really cool bounty like oh yeah the bog beast of baku has risen once again from the lagoon and you have to go slay it right like that such a missed opportunity because it comes back all the time but now 250 years later it doesn't appear anymore and that's kind of i'm like man it would have been really cool if we would have gotten like as far as i understand it there's no reference to it in guild wars uh guild wars 2 at all uh so it's kind of a shame in that sense uh, but yeah so we get sent out to kill it and uh yeah so let's talk to uh this merchant doesn't say anything interesting uh this collector uh, by order of the Emperor, all members have been declared outlaws. 
So they want you to, to get a gold crimson skull um, coin. Um, then we have Palmu here uh, with Nai. And she says, you're Petmaster Raleigh, are you not? Please, you must help me. I do not have much money, but my son is ill. I hired a woman named Mara to help, keep, uh, help me look after him. But when I woke up this morning, Mara was gone. And what is worse, so was my coin purse. I never should have trusted a stranger and I cannot leave Nai alone here. Can you help me? Just find Mara and retrieve my coin purse. Please, I know not where else I should turn. Okay, so um, Mara has... Ta has sto so, so Palmo has hired a lady to help her look after Nai. Perhaps maybe so that she can go and... Uh, you know, work an evening job or so I get a second job so that she can provide for, for her son or whatever, right? It's very, it's very like heartwarming, like, oh my God, you know, and then it kind of turns sour because Mara steals the, she doesn't, you know, she's poor already and Mara takes the last of her money and runs with it, right? So, hi, I'm Nai. Have you seen my nanny? My mother is really worried about her and kind of mad too. I think I know where Mara is, but mother is so upset. She will not believe me. Mara t uh, did take the coin purse, but only to place a bet on the Drake races they hold on that little island to the north. Mara said that my mother would never approve, but she was sure she could win enough to pay for my medicine for years. Funny though, I've never actually seen anyone racing Drakes up there, or anywhere really. So, kind of weird, right? So we're talking about racing Drakes, okay, and the island to the north. So, it seems that this nanny lied to the little kid, right? Probably the little kid found out that uh, or saw her take the coin purse and the nanny was like, oh, I'm just going to go bet on these races that they're doing these Drake races out there on this island and um, they uh, and and win a lot of money or something. Right. Like and, and pay for your medicine for for many years. Right. It seems to me like that was a lie that she told, but uh, we don't really know. So. So let's go out there and uh Luckily for us, both of those quests happen in the same area, the Bogbees. So this is actually, so this is the lagoon, guys, right? This is the lagoon right here, uh, and it has a little island in the middle. So that's really cool. And uh, as we heard the story about the bog beast, um, on there is a, apparently there's a cave underneath this island, right? Again, really cool. That would have been a really cool precedence for a strike mission where they could have gone, you know, and blah, blah, blah. But there's no, there's no... Um, cave underneath Hydra Lagoon in, in Guild Wars 2 or anything like that. So it's very unfortunate. But um, yeah, anyways, so we, we this is the lagoon right here. And uh, it's really cool because once we get to the lagoon, and there's a crane. So if you haven't gotten a crane, you can get a crane here. We have Grasping Root. Uh, we have some enemies. Uh, we have, the thing is that there is uh, a boss that spawns here. Okay, this is like a weird, um, I think this is one of the Dragon Lily. It's a Dragon Lily boss that spawns here but we also have the bog beast boss so this is this is why having all these people in my group is a good idea why are they not fighting why are they oh now they're fighting okay um that's why having all of these people in my group is a good idea what happened to my did my did my did my uh yeah he died i don't know what happened there so uh we're gonna be facing it's gonna be very hard while we're in the lagoon though Hydro Lagoon Water. While standing Hydro Lagoon Water, you gain 25 health every second for every skill you use. Uh, so this is Taipao Island. And uh, yeah, standing in the actual lagoon part heals us. So it has, like, it's not this evil place, right? There's some kind of, there's healing properties in this, in this lagoon, uh, which is just very cool, right, to think about. So I'm going to try to not get the Bog Beast, but I can't guarantee it. Either, so. Uh, the Bog Beast is over there, um, and it is this, look at it, it's this, like, demon-like creature. Um, the exact model of what, what that, what it, oh god, I'm gonna go down into the water, because, remember, using skills in the water, uh, heals us, so. Oh my god, it's obstructed. I'm gonna have everyone move up here. Um, let's kill these dragon lilies. My healer just died.
Right, so we defeated that guy. Um, and now let's defeat the Bog Beast of Boku. Look at him. He looks almost demonic, right? And that's that's another thing, like, it, it kind of fits into, like, you know, I don't know. There, there's, like, is there a way to, like, retcon it or something? Oh, God, we got a gold out of that. Um, where, you know, it's like, he almost looked Cryptus-like in a weird way. He's a thorn, he's a thorn wolf or whatever, you know, that's the kind of, but he's a, he's a, he's a weird demon spirit that keeps returning all the time to fight the children or whatever, right? Or kill the children or kidnap the children or whatever. So, um, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, so we killed it, uh, and we're going to go back. Uh, I just, I did I identify that it's not terrible it's not a terrible staff really i mean if you didn't have any other any other weapons like this would be a good weapon to have for necromancer all right so uh we and so now we have to find the the coin purse and it actually leads us right over here and we see some bleached bones and a ravenous drake guys this is actually like a uh a turtle more than a drake really i want to say um but what do we find Palmo's coin purse. So it looks like, and we're gonna talk to these bleach bones. I don't know if we get actually any info on it. We don't. So it seems like she wasn't lying. Mara did come down here and was trying to do something with Drake's because she got close to this Drake that ate her and swallowed the coin purse, and she died, and her bones are now bleaching out here in the lagoon. Um, so kind of strange, right? To think like, okay, that's kind of weird. Like, was she lying? You know, she because the kid said, I've never seen anyone race drakes. And, you know, there's only one drake there. Like, and there's no one around. So, um, you know, what what really happened there? So we have uh, Jatin Village here. This tiny little, like, four little huts that are, like, hanging out on the side over here. Um, not really anything going on there. Um nothing nothing really there all of this of course in guild wars 2 has been developed now all of this has like um you know houses and things going on you know uh oh i didn't even see that message i'm sorry really wish we got ritualist with cancer uh uh with cancer those ghost models look great yeah um I know, I, I still feel like it's unfortunate Ritualist is not anything that is really accessible um, in Guild Wars 2. You know, I still think that Scepter, Scepter is probably, Scepter for Revan is probably the most disgusting weapon they've ever released and I'm still really mad about it, but um, nothing you can do. Alright, so we have a collector here. Oh, please, please, can you help me out? I made a bet with friends about who could find the most impressive shell. Well, finding an enormous shell would be impressive, right? I figure nothing is bigger than a bone snap turtle. The problem is I cannot seem to find one. So, uh, really interesting. So we we uh, we kind of went in a circle because right here is the cave that we came from. Inside of that cave up here was the other guy that made a bed with his uh, with his friends. So this is the other person that he made a bed with, looking for shells and saying that you know um, that uh, so his were the color of the shell because they changed the kappa changed their their the color of their shells um as they go old so that must be the most impressive shell she's saying the bigger they get right so she's looking for some for a big shell rather than a beautiful looking one she's just looking for a big one um we never see the result of that of of that um uh bet or whatever right so um but yeah anyways uh it's just kind of a weird way to have these um uh, what are they like uh, collectors out here so here we are um, so beach to the north right remember so we're, we're also doing that quest at the same time where uh, head north to the beach because uh, the guy just keeps seeing Naga like kind of disappear and like appear and reappear and it's just kind of like okay what, what the heck is going on there um, so we're gonna fight our way through here and like I said our group is so large right now that we're pretty much on the safe side Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up these quests that I have here right now in Haiju Lagoon. And we're going to move to Zendai Jun. And then probably around that time it will be 
uh it'll be one and then i'll be leaving so but i do want to finish up this area um we will be coming back to this area there is a very important quest that we will be doing um where um we're gonna meet a, another a, an interesting character and kind of deal with this story as well All right, so this is Daochu Village. So uh, it, it's kind of weird how they call it a village because these are like these are weird huts, right? This is this is like the early, and then there's a weird cave. Uh, we never we never really get to like see this this cave. Um, you know, is this the cave? Is this the cave entrance that leads to where the bog beast of Baku was, right? Because remember, the island is here, and it's said that there is some kind of cave cavern on underneath the lagoon where the bok beast kind of like revives and comes from um so is this is this the entrance to that is that is that where kind of where he appears out of or whatever um but yeah it looks like this village this daochu village um was taken over by um by naga and these are naga housing right they they look very different and in, in guild wars 2 they made them very colorful and they're more like on these in these giant shell shells but um, the idea is still kind of the same, I feel like, that, you know, you can kind of see the similarities between the two. Uh, I want to kind of clear out all the all these Naga here. Uh, but yeah, we actually have this little, like, beachhead. Um, and you can kind of see we can walk. We can't swim. There's a, there's a boat out there. Um, we can't swim, but we can walk out. I love how, like, only this part is glistening in the water. Nothing else. Nothing else is supposed to be glistening. I love that glistening effect. It's really cool. Uh, but yeah, so we go here. Oh, oh, yeah. They do appear out of nowhere. They just jump out of the water. It's not like they just like. <clears throat> I don't know. They don't. They don't go invisible. They just like. Jump out. All right. Um, we want to explore the other side. Uh, over here. Yeah, there we go. And another group appears here. So we finished this quest as well. We've we've investigated now, so now we can report back to uh, the scout Shen Shen Fei and tell him about it. So we've 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 done all three quests that are available to us right now. Uh, there's a, there's another quest that I would like to do, but we're gonna do that uh, on the way to Zendaijun. I want to finish these three up. We're gonna go back to Linkai Township and then go out to another place uh, real quick to do one more quest, and then we're gonna move into Zendaijun. Um, and we are, that's where we're going to end it. So a couple more things that we're going to do guys, if you're interested in hanging about, I appreciate all you guys being here, all the discussion, all the, you know, uh, the support. I mean, uh, you know, it, I, I took a little bit of a break because I was dealing with some stuff, um, privately. I mean, I, I you know, we always, we, we all deal with things in our private lives and stuff, but it kind of took it, it, it I kind of needed to focus on that specifically. Um, and now I have a little bit more of like, um, breathing room to, uh, you know, do this kind of stuff. So I'm going to be getting back into making some videos, uh, nothing crazy, I don't think, but, uh, I want to, uh, for now, you know, I mean, there might be more that I will do at some later point, but, um, right now we're, we're going to kind of slowly get back into it. And, uh, I would like to, as the year goes on, uh, you know, kind of make some more videos and stuff with you, uh, with you guys and again if you guys want to become members i would really appreciate it as well we have some really cool um emotes uh that you can get uh, i gotta uh, also i, I don't know I, I guess my um i guess uh, actually let me check it out while i'm here i guess my um where do i 
Can you move it to the one here? Um, my bot doesn't work. I don't. I haven't looked in that in a long time. So let me actually see. Um, Uh, wait, did they remove the bot or something? I can't find it. Oh, there. It is. Yeah, it, it deactivates every so often. The um, the bot just deactivates automatically. So, um, but yeah, anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I gotta change some stuff in it, but um. <clears throat> but yeah, so if you guys want to become members, uh, we do have some really cute emotes and, uh, you know, obviously at some point in time, once I get more members, I'm going to look at like member, member specific things. Like maybe there's something that, uh, maybe I can do some giveaways for members only or something. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to look into that. Um, all right. So let's report. Of course, the Naga have been using the subterranean tunnels. Why did I think of that? So again, we, we kind of, there, there was the hole in the, in the town, right? And it's like, oh yeah, they jump. But I thought they jumped out of the water, but apparently there's tunnels here on the, on the thing. And they're using that to, to, cause remember there's, there's, uh, these waters spread all across all of, all of Cantha, right? The, the waters from this mountain over here spread all across Cantha and provides water for all the people. So meaning that there is a some like some kind of subterranean tunnel system and you know these are water creatures so they can just you know swim through the water in these tunnels and get somewhere really quickly. So that's what they're doing. That's how they're moving to this to the western side of the island without being detected, right? They they don't have to go through Jaya bluffs like we do. They they literally can go under the water and then they come out over here, right? And they can and they can from there invade um, and do their thing. So, um, you know, is that little cave that we saw, is that leading to the subterranean tunnels where the beast of Baku maybe hangs out as well? You know, there's something kind of weird going on there, right? Um, obviously the tunnels extend much further than we imagined. I will send word on to Captain, uh, Zing, uh, Jing, Jing, Yu, Hu, uh, and fill him in on what you have found. All right, cool. So we finished that. We kind of helped them out. Um, that's super cool. Um, and we got, uh, you know, we'll, we helped them, you know, work on work on that. So, um, all right, let's go and report back. We can go around this way uh, this time. And we can turn in some of these other, because we have, we are also the slayer of the ba beasts of Baku. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe Headmaster Vang is impressed. Probably not, but maybe, maybe, he, maybe he would be impressed. A bramble reaper, though. That train is super loud. I don't know if you guys heard that. Oh my god. It's weird, because some of the trains that come through are like... You know, they're... Sometimes they're really quiet and you can barely hear them. And they like only like toot like one time. And then other times, it's just like they come in and it just sounds like there's a herd of like elephants parading through town um you know screaming like it's weird that's kind of crazy all right so we brought back this person oh no this is the right coin burst but it, it is torn torn and empty and covered in is that blood how will i pay for nice medicine now but i'm sure you did all you could pet master rally and at least that thieving mara learned her lesson and then she pretty much gives us probably the last 150 gold that she owns boom done uh we will meet Palmu later again and Palmu and Nai but yeah so he's he's sick and now she can't so the point uh, coin purse is broken all the coins are out of it oh I need to turn the other, the other place as well oh and I didn't talk to Mirko Mirko was a collector and I didn't even know oh it's a Kurzig the Kurzig doing all the way out here uh but I need them to be flesh or I'll never finish it if they aren't or fresh, I don't know why I read flesh. <laughs> if they aren't fresh enough, then no, I can't even think about what that could mean. Oh, good day to you. I, di I didn't notice you there. I'm looking for enchanted vines, but only the freshest will do. If you bring me three of them. Um, yeah, so you can, if you wanted to, 
Um, I've tried to do that at some point. Just kind of go around and try to get collector's armor. Um, so you don't have to buy new armor. It's such a pain in the ass because you're literally looking for um, getting specific drops. And it's just so hard. And you would have to like reload areas. And I tried to do that in Nightfall. I think I did that on stream with you guys. And I got to the point where I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this. I'm just buying the armor. It was really stupid. So, all right. So we have killed the beast. Thank you, friend. Let us hope that you have dealt a blow, uh, dealt a blow to the Bok beast from which I, it will never recover. Well, apparently it didn't because it's not there in Guild Wars 2. So we did something right. All right, and we move on. So we have finished all of these quests. So now we have to go to Zendai June. But like I said, there's one more quest I would like to do. I forgot about that. I would have accepted that earlier. Um, but yeah, that's okay. Um, we actually have to go to the mill that we saw earlier. And talk to the miller there, this mill right there. And do that little quest little quest. And then once we have finished that, we can go to Zendai Jun. And that's where we'll finish off today. Oh, it is now 1 a.m., so I'm still okay. I mean it's gonna be like 115 when I leave, I guess. Or something. So he has a quest for us. Miller Quang. Shang Sh Sh Quang? Sh I don't know how to say that. I don't know how to pronounce it. Anymore. Okay. I cannot tell you how nice it is to see some new faces around here. Ever since the Naga population exploded, we know now why, because they've been using the tunnels. So it's been, you know, they've been using the tunnels and apparently the entrance that's right behind us down in the lagoon. Um, ever since the Naga population exploded, more and more people have been moving out of the area. They keep saying I should go too. But this is my home and no snakes, however large they, they be, are going to chase me away. You know, if you're looking for some work, I could use a little help. You see, before the Naga came, I used to keep some sentimental items in a chest out on Euroso Island. It's a small island to the northeast. It was great, nice view, nobody around, lots of privacy. I used to sit there for hours, sifting through my old things and thinking of things and friends long gone. Now that the Naga have taken over the island, I've been thinking of bringing my things back here, where I can keep a closer eye on them. If you retrieve that old chest full of memories for me, I shall give you a little something for your trouble. Sounds easy enough. All right, let's go. So that is the that is the island he's talking about, Yorozu Island. Um, and we have to go and retrieve the box. Um, but as we know, as we just heard, uh, oh, there's an only get him. Yeah. But as we just heard, uh, Naga have been invading the area, so. Uh, is it going to be so easy for us to do that? Oh, there's a collector, Gorobai. Let's talk to Mr. Gorobai. Oh, I could have just gone. I literally... Oh, whatever. Either way, I guess. Whatever. I didn't realize that I couldn't go directly to the beach from here. That was actually... There is... Isn't there a path directly down to the beach on the other side? I think there might be on the other side. Um, Is there... No, there's not. Okay. I'm just misremembering now. I thought there was some kind of direct path from the upper cliffs, but there's not. You have to go this way. Throw dirt. I'm blinded and poisoned. Not fun. Alright, there's the island. Yorozu Island. And indeed, there are Naga around. Uh, but we also have Crimson Skull. Ooh boy. I'm gonna talk to the collector first before I do anything. Oh there is a beach, but it does not lead it does not lead anywhere on there. You can't actually go anywhere from the beach. Um it doesn't actually go across. Right, let's see what he's collecting. Hello. In my youth my family lived in a small village on the northeastern coast of Shinji Island. That is until the Naga burned down my village and slaughtered my loved ones. At first, I constantly questioned the gods why I was left behind, but then it came to me. I was left here to revenge my family's death. It is my duty given by the gods to destroy the Naga and everything they hold dear. Uh, if you kill any of the abhorrent beasts, bring me their pelts as well. Alright. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe this is what, you know, north northeastern, maybe Daichu, Daichu village, right? That was taken over by Naga. Maybe that was his village. Um, he doesn't name it. I mean, it could also be Jatin Village or Linkai Township, uh, you know, any any of those. But 
uh, northeastern edge. I mean, that really feels like that would be Daichu Village um, that was burnt down, and then they built their own village on top of it, right? Golden egg. All right, here's the little island. There's the old chest. Um, but this guy right there, Tindao Kainang, he's named Kainang, which is kind of strange. He's named after, Ka like, this is Kainang City, um, and he has the weird Kainang name, so I don't know what that's all about. Um, yeah, this is going to be pretty rough. Do these need to survive? Yeah, I think they need to survive, so I might... I think I'm gonna try to lure the, lure them out, make it easier that way. Um, yeah, get this get this one group first. Oh god! Yeah, they use the spirit rift. I talked about this last time. The spirit rift is such a bad, um, so bad because it's so so strong. Uh, so I'm going to try to lure them out as well. I think that's probably the smartest one. Yeah, lure them out is better. Because otherwise I, I won't be able to see them. Uh, I'm, I'm going to attack him. Oh, Spirit Rift. That's going to do a ton of damage. Oh, I didn't interrupt him. I'm gonna try to interrupt this. Oh god. Spirit Rift if I can. I didn't do it. I, I keep not looking at it right when it's happening. Oh, I interrupted it. Nice. Alright, let's kill him. Ooh, alright, everyone survived. This, this can be very tough if you don't. Because if he's around the corner um, and your attacks don't hit him right and and they're all just like even their auto attacks are not you know because they're you know they're being blocked by by the wall and stuff it's bad so you gotta want to lure them out a little bit all right so we're taking the old chest and bringing it to him bringing it to the guy yeah so this is the first i think this is the first ritualist ritualist boss that we actually see um in the game so but anyway, so we got the last of the quests that we're going to do uh, for tonight. We're going to, again, we're going to come back to Hyjal Lagoon tomorrow uh, first thing because we do have another quest that I would like to do here. Um, or t tomorrow. I am I'm i don't know if I'm streaming tomorrow, guys. I, I don't know if I'm streaming tomorrow. But um, if I'm streaming tomorrow, then probably we'll be more good. I'm really kind of like getting into it. You know, I'm really like... Or Guild Wars 1. <laughs> Not even Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 1. Super fun. It's such a unique game. And it's such a great experience. And there's so much to see and learn and do. And, you know, you really feel, like, the amount of effort that was put into the game. You really feel that, you know? So we have the box of belongings. How much crap did I get? Look at all this crap that I got. Holy shit. So much crap. We can break down these this feathered crest to get some more feathers. Alright, he says, it is sure nice to see friendly face. Uh blah, blah blah. My chest, and it says all of my precious trinkets in it. I never thought I would see this again. Please take this as a token of my gratitude. Um Oh, okay. Well, we'll do we'll do that we'll do that next time. I was hoping you would come around again, Pet uh, Petmaster Rally. Ever since you retrieved my old chest for me, an idea has been forming in my mind. Before the rest of my of uh, the villagers left, a number of them went to take out the Naga and reclaim our lands. According to the few survivors, they were making good headway until they came against one particularly nasty Naga. He took out most of them before they even had a chance to react. They were only a handful who managed to. There were only a handful that managed to flee, and those who did. Uh, packed up their things and that very day and headed to the city. But I've ne I've been thinking, if anyone can kill the Naga boss, you can. And maybe if you can get rid of this Naga, we convince we can convince the others to come back. All right, so we uh, will come back for two quests, or actually multiple quests. I want to say that we're coming back. 
So there's a lot to do if you're really like looking to do a lot of quests. Uh, I won't be doing all of the side quests um, because it gets crazy. By the time I'm level 20, I'm just kind of kind of move on with my life, and I, I, you know, once once we reach Kainang uh, Center and stuff, and, and we're level 20, I, I don't think I'm gonna be doing a lot of the side quests, um, if any, you know. Alright, so Zendai Jun is not very look at that statue. Did you see it was like upright and then it fell apart? I wonder I wonder is there I wonder if there's a reason for that. That's super interesting. Yeah, so there like I said, there is a way down to that beach down there, but then there's nowhere to go down down there, I don't think. So Oh, there is. You can actually go up the other side of it, but it doesn't really. Work. All right. So here's Master Togo, guys. We're supposed to meet him in Zendai Jun, so here he is, waiting for us. All right. Uh, Sister Tai says, "At le at last, at least, at last, we have reached Zendai Jun." Uh, Alright, uh, studies are progressing well in place. Well done, young one. I believe we have finally discovered the source of the plague here in Zendai Jun. We are ready to enter the valley. Speak with Brother Han Jui and he will let us pass. Alright, so we're here. Oh, oh dear. Dear me, please, you must not travel into the valley. Perhaps you have not heard the news yet, but a horrible plague has infested the entire valley. Many of us who live there were forced to flee. It was awful, just awful. Duena, protect us. Master Togo has faith in your skills, so uh, so must we. Let me know when you're ready to proceed. Um, has faith in you. I beg of you, remain on guard at all times. Yep, okay. Oh my god, 17 times. Alright, so we get a little cutscene here. As we enter Zendai Jun. So this is the valley of Zendai Jun. Look at that one bird flying in. Oh, the earth is shaking. And she's like, what is that? And she's like, there's a look and the screen. So there's like a miasma that's setting in over the valley and people are getting corrupted. They're getting afflicted right now. We saw the affliction taking place. So yeah, something really dark and evil is going on in this valley. But that's where we are. We are hanging out right over there. Um, so they kind of they show us this like, ooh, this is what's been happening in the in the valley. Oh, look, look at our crane. He's like, ah, we're coming. And right, let's see what Mash Tugu has to say. I'm glad you have come. I'm glad you have come. I yeah, like I said, there's something wrong with the audio. Uh, what was that? Uh, I do not know, but let us hope that whatever made that sound did not suffer long. So there was some kind of like animal cry. I think you could hear that a little bit. Be on your guard. Who knows what foul things we may find inside. Be on your guard. I don't know if he's saying this. He's saying not. He's not saying that in my ears. So I don't know. Um, he might be saying it to you guys. I'm not sure. Oh, if he's super loud. Well, look what's going on there. Licked it. Yeah, I think he's saying this to you guys, but he's not saying it to me. Uh, affected my old friend has spread. Yeah, he's talking about Minister Tro. We must get to the bottom of this. Come. Yeah, I don't know. Sound for me is kind of weird. I don't know. It's it's not working properly. So I think you guys heard it though. So sorry that I talked over all of that. I apologize. All right, so here we are. So we're outside of Zendai Jun right now. Uh, I'm gonna sell all of the things. Sell, 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 sell. Oh, oh, there's more. And sell and sell and sell and sell. Yep, I don't care. Sell, sell, sell. 
Look at all the stuff that we got. Jesus. Remember how we started out with one platinum and now we have five? Five plus. Crazy. All right, so let's kind of finish up here uh, with a couple of things. My fellow brothers and I are grateful that you have brought help. Balthazar grant you courage and strength. Ooh, Balthazar. Ooh. All that aged like milk, huh? All right, so we're at max beast mastery now, guys. So here, as you guys can see, so these people, the, the people that we kind of journeyed with, they join our party now, or rather they replace some of the people because guess who's not here anymore? The other people. Um, a son is in here. Sister Ty or Sister Ty is here. Um, uh, uh, was it Taya? Was that her name? Whoever the the healer lady was, it's Sister. It was replaced by Sister Ty, right? Um, we had uh, the the archer guy uh, Yoon or whatever. He's gone. It's now Joe is here, right? Um, we have Lucas, but that's talent. So these guys, the instructors, are now our teammates, right? And they're uh, much higher level they're level 16 than the other the other people that came with us before um so yeah so we we have these guys uh now in in uh that we can do in our party in our six uh six man party so uh yeah kind of um you know expanding on the on the people i don't know if they have like actual oh there's only one way to know that i, I can uh that i know of to contain the plague Quarantine those who are sick and kill them all. If only Master Togo would listen, I'd be happy to do dirty work for him. Wow. Okay. Uh, these are dark times that we're living in, my friend. That is why it's up to us to light the way. We could give in to all these problems plaguing us, but that just wouldn't be in the proper spirit that Master Togo has shown us. Did you need something? Uh, together we will stand against these twisted creatures. We must prevail. Uh, I hope Mei Lin is doing all right. She had to stay back at the monastery to guard the others. If she wanted to guard anyone, it would be Headmaster Ka, most likely. I have no idea what she sees in that old man. I hope we get this plague business sorted out soon uh, so things return to normal around here. Okay. Uh, I'm not certain who could unleash a plague like this upon the peaceful people of Xingjie. Whoever did this must be a tortured soul. This is a cry for help if I've ever seen one. Uh, the plague is a real work of art. I don't know who created it, but whoever it was certainly knew what they were doing. Not only does the plague kill, but also inflicts insanity upon its victims, leading to them bursting open and spawning an unholy abomination. I only wish I'd have thought of that, uh, thought of it. So messed up fucking necromancer over here. Master Togo seems very worried by this plague, and that worries me. There isn't much that I have that he hasn't seen. That man hasn't seen. One would think that the re uh, the best way to withstand this plague would be to confubulate the spirit realm. However, I am dismayed to find that Master Togo has not yet consulted me. I'm, I am, of course, the preeminent authority on the spirit realm and those ethereal denizens who reside there. Uh, what about your headmaster? Wouldn't she be the the one the the one that would do that? Because we we do have a headmaster. Uh, I want to see. Do they all have dialogue all the time? And did I miss to read the dialogue? That would be kind of sad. So. Uh, but I do want to see. So uh, we actually do see Mei Ling that you saw. Mei Ling is one of the other trainers. We never met her. She's, um, yeah. So see, they never had a dialogue before. They have like this, this passing. Oh, no, I guess they do have dialogue. You got to talk to them twice, though. Oh, interesting. Um, but they don't give you, he just, uh, a son of the crab amata. Uh, they don't give you like that much. That many details. Uh, Lucas von uh, uh, of House Vasberg. Um, Marn to meet you. Uh, I really, you look like you have a lot of confidence. I wish I had, could say the same. Uh, not like my Lucas or Asen or just well, but anyone. I will try to do my best. So she's very unsure of herself. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That was kind of weird. Uh, but yeah, so we actually have a mention of Mei Ling, and I, I didn't talk to her earlier. I want. I will finish off with that. Um, so Mei Ling is actually the, um, she's, or, uh, yeah, she's, I was like, that's not the guy, she's a, she's a woman, I don't know. Um, so she's one of the trainers as well. Shame you're not a Mesmer, uh, so you will not have the opportunity to train with Headmaster Ka. So, uh, she's one of the other Mesmer trainers, and, um, Lo Sha actually mentions her and says that she had to stay behind, 
um, which all the other trainers have to as well, like Brother Pe Pewano and all those, right? They all have to stay. It's it's all the group that we're with right now that is journeying further ahead um, to the other side of Sendai Jun. So, anyways, yeah. So we're gonna continue next uh, next time. I don't know when next time will be, but uh, it'll be at some point. Um, and we're probably gonna finish up Xing Jie next time. Uh, there's only a few more things that we have to do in in Xing Jie, and then we're gonna journey. We should be by the time we're done, we should be close to level 20, maybe not quite like 18, 19, 20, somewhere around that. And we're gonna go and we're gonna start uh, the quest here for um, you know, f for for glory, I guess, whatever. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much. It was a pleasure. Uh, hanging out with you guys and uh, it was great having discussion with you guys uh, again I, I do want to stream some other stuff so next time might not be my next stream might not be Guild Wars 1 but I don't know we'll have to see we'll have to see how I feel tomorrow night maybe maybe I want to stream tomorrow night we'll, we'll see I don't I don't quite know but um, yeah if you guys want to stay tuned uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel um, uh, yeah subscribe to the channel uh, if you guys want to become members I did talk about that as well but uh, if you subscribe to the channel uh, you can ring the bell and it'll notify you when I go live. So, um, you know, when if you guys want to see more of this. Obviously, this does get uploaded to the live tab and on my channel. So you can look all at all the live, all the past live streams that I've had. Uh, watch them right on there. So uh, that's kind of nice. Um, so anyways, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jacob. As always, thank you, Emily. Uh, Null Hy Hypothesis, that's a name that I've seen uh, pop up a lot. So um, thank you for coming back again. Uh, my sister was here as well. Thank you so much. And uh, everyone that was in the background, everyone that's hanging out, I appreciate you guys. Uh, 